new hero, boys and girls. Introducing Dawnbreaker. Melee carry durable. Low complexity. Dawnbreaker shines in the heart of battle, happily crushing enemies with her celestial hammer and using the energy released to heal nearby allies. At one with the mass of her weapon, she reve revels in hurling her hammer through multiple foes and then converging with it, with it in a blazing wake. Creating a rival ancient force of chaos and darkness by descendants of the first light, Dawnbreaker only taps her true cosmic power to fly to the aid of her teammates, eager to rout her enemies on the battlefield no matter where they may be. Darkness fears the break of dawn. In the aeons after the Keeper's exodus birthed at the Age of Light, some amongst the first sun lineage began to align against the chaos their ancestors makers left chasing in the his wake calling themselves the children of the light they saw no one else is worthy of taking up the keepers abandoned mantle and they yearned to beat back the onslaught of darkness creating glorious armies built to purge the cosmos of all creatures of primordial light Valora the dawnbreaker most prized warrior amongst the children of ancient creations is the shining herald of the majesty of order and light. Molded from the heart of a young metallic star the charged and charged by the golden breath of new life, Valora was called to spread the glow of the children's wisdom to the darkest reaches of the universe. Setting fire to the heavens with each swing of her celestial hammer amidst the endless battle to keep chaos at bay. So, here's her abilities. Starbreaker, her Q, Dawnbreaker whirls her hammer around three times, damaging enemies with her attack and bonus damage. On the final strike, she smashes her hammer down, stunning. She does have a stun, and damaging enemies in front of her. Looks cool. Celestial Hammer. Dawnbreaker hurls her weapon at the target, damaging enemies struck along the way. The hammer pauses briefly at the destination before flying back at her, leaving a blazing trail that slows enemies. Dawnbreaker can recall the hammer at any time, pulling her towards it so they meet in the middle. That looks like a very strong ability. I mean, dang. Look at this. The hammer... I guess it would do damage on both. Luminosity. After three attacks, Dawnbreaker powers up, charging her next attack with a critical hit that heals all allied heroes around her for a portion of attack damage dealt. She does a crit with it, too. Solar Guardian. Dawnbreaker creates a pulsing effect at, near, effect at a location near an allied hero anywhere on the map, damaging anywhere on the map, damaging enemies and healing allies with each pulse. After a short duration, she flies to the target duration, to target location, dealing additional damage and stunning enemies upon landing. After a short duration, she flies to the target location, dealing additional damage and stunning enemies upon landing. This is Galio Walt. This is straight up Galio ult. If people have played League of Legends, this is actually Galio's ult. I guess minus the stun. Oh, it does stun enemies. Jesus. So she's got a... She does have a details page. I'm not going to review that right now. And here's the main event. 7.29 gameplay patch with the header image being outposts which are still in the game so I've already reviewed a little bit of this I got to a particular change and then had to take a break and decided to start streaming so we've got map updates uh, radiant mid I really like this uh, presentation they've got going as well this is very just they used to just mention this in in little notes or the map updated and like now they're actually showing you what they've done so here they've added another path and radiant mid they've moved things around the jungle camps there's no longer this little uh, wall of trees here as well as more clear around here but the the camps are also in different locations now so 
this is more like dire safe lane jungle layout previous version updated very nice I'm not gonna spend too much time on these just gonna show them previous version there's a lot of things that are very interesting about this like just they've rotated uh, where the ancients are you can see in this like ancients were sort of in front and with this medium camp behind and now they've switched it so this is again more parity with the radiant triangle um, putting these medium camps forward a bit safer to farm ancients really they've moved this wall they've also moved the outposts closer to the middle they've uh, move the eyeball spots as well, as well away from the tier 3 offlane tower and more into the triangle it's interesting they've just removed these eyeball spots added a few more trees remove this eyeball spot as well more trees and then this I, I have already looked through this they've done a lot to sort of create more paths on the side of this and this is also the same on the on the uh, dire top two they um, well, Dire Bot Tier 2. These two now are sort of parody. Uh, they have these side paths that you can cut into. And, uh, well, actually with Dire's, it looks like you have to cut a tree to get into there. But anyway, this is, this is also blocked off, so you can't get right in beside the, the Dire Tier 2 in the trees. So that's interesting. Um... bit more pathways behind the towers and these are a bit more pathways through them very cool just a bit more trees slight change of layout less you could just see before there was this less trees on the left side of the offlane tier 2 for dire now there's just a little bit more cover maybe places to hide that kind of thing. A bit better for defense, I think. And a slight change to the layout of the trees for the Dire Mid Tier 1. Runes! A new rune emerges. Terrain updated with various changes. Added the power... Added the water power rune. Spawns at both power rune locations only at minute 2 and 4. Instantly restores 100 health and 80 mana when used. Can be used to fill bottles. Starting at 6 minutes, power rune spawn as usual on one side. Added plus 2 attributes leveling for up to 7 times for the 7 empty levels 1 to 26. And can be leveled in any order via clicking the talent tree circle. They will automatically be leveled if there is no other options available. Level 30 no longer grants all remaining talents. Instead, level 27, 28, 29, and 30 will grant you the remaining level 10, 15, 20, and 25 talents. That's interesting. Just smoothing out the, the scaling a bit. It's, uh, it's, a good sh it's an interesting change. Outpost no longer gives XP at 10, 20, 30, etc. minute mark. Outposts now provide XPM, XP per minute, while controlled. XP equals 2... Per minute, no extra XP granted while controlling two outposts, similar to the existing rules. Notes compared to the previous version: 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes total XP given per player changed from 150, 500, 1050, 1800 to 110, 420, 420 all 930, 1640. The XP provided at the minute mark at on the minute mark. So each minute you hold them, now you get experience. The amount you get for each minute at the start is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 for minutes 1 through 10. The bounty runes after the initial set are reduced by 10%. Bounty runes no longer spawn in the river. The amount of these runes gave now... The amount of these runes gave is now provided automatically over time through GPM. Bounty runes now spawn every 3 minutes in the respective jungle area. Total rune count reduced from 4 to 2. Bounty runes no longer disappear when once, when new ones spawn. They now spawn alongside previous previous ones if it isn't picked up. That's weird, but like okay. I mean, for for teams that like don't pick up bounties, I guess they're not gonna lose anything now, or or 
vice versa. I mean, I suppose it's even more punishing if the other team can steal them. At minute zero, bounty runes spawn in the jungle at the power rune locations. Four at the start of the game. So they still are, there's still a f four bounty contest at the beginning of the game. But then only two bounty runes every five minutes afterwards, I guess. Various cast ranges and movement speed talents items abilities have been replaced or toned down these are included in line with the items in the hero sections below hero kill assist gold now adjusted based on the relative net worth difference difference between the two teams for example if your team is down 5,000 gold and the enemy has 50,000 net worth your assist gold will be 10% more okay uh, heroes now start the game with one TP scroll rather than three kind of thought that was coming it was seemed like a strange uh, Thing to just be giving you like three TPs at the beginning of the game and then followed by this interesting change hero deaths now gain one TP scroll on death and their cost is increased to 100 so every time you die you now get a hundred gold back essentially is like a free a free TP that's interesting uh, heroes with a one with a 1.0 turn rate now have a 0 0.9 turn rate Heroes with a 0.5 turn rate now have a 0.6 turn rate, so they've increased the turn rate on heroes with a lower turn rate and reduced it on high turn rate heroes. Interesting. Turn rate effect on time turn improved to 20%. I think there was animation bugs with that. Ag uh, Agnum Scepter, Roshan now drop, now requires you to activate it to consume it. it has no effect until consumed. That makes sense, so now someone can pick up the Aghanim Scepter and then give it to someone else on the team. Aghanim Shard now drops on the second Roshan kill, and only that one has the same activation mechanics as the Scepter drop. Okay, again, being able to share things from Roshan, that's pretty good. Increases building teleportation range from 575 to 800, affects TP scrolls and boots of travel. So I guess you'll be able to TP further away from your towers. It's interesting. Uh, oops. Sorry. Outpost vision reduced from 700 to 500. Captain's mode initial picking phase changed from first, second, first, second to first, second, second, first. Weird. Okay. It probably has some implications for pro play. Uh, Hoodwink added to captain's mode, so she's balanced, everybody. Rejoice. Couriers no longer have vision when inside Roshan's pit. Uh, a lot of people were using their courage to just keep a scout on Roshan. And, you know, late game when you're not using your courier as much, it was just a free way of keeping track of Rosh. So that, that, that makes sense. I guess you could still do it. You're just not going to get the vision. And if your, ro if your pet die or, or if your courier dies, uh, then you still know they're, they're checking Rosh at least. Uh... Wards can, and, and also, well, I mean, yeah, so, so just Roshan's Pit. So this is an interesting change. I mean, it basically just means that you don't get free vision from your courier in the, in the pit. So you can't check, like, health or whatever, but... Um, not killing the courier if it's checking Rosh is going to be a thing now. Wards can now be denied from full health by any allied player if the ward is placed in a spawn camp box. So this is just nerfing griefers. People that were warding up camps and stuff, there's it's now possible to just destroy the ward. Uh, that's good. Ancient neutral creep camp keep creep armor increased by one, except for ancient golems. Okay. Uh, neutral items now fly towards the killing hero rather than spawning under the dead unit. Nice quality of life change, I guess. Hero band count for matchmaking increased by six. Still chance based. Okay. Buyback costs now reduced from 200 plus net worth divided by 12 to 200 plus net worth divided by 13, so that should lead to a lower buyback costs. Uh, courier respawn time reduced from 60 plus 7 times level to 60 plus 6 times level, so lower cooldown or lower respawn time on courier. Backdoor protection. Damage reduce damage reduction increased from 40% to 50%. So backdoor a little bit better. Can't zerg through backdoors as much. Hero to hero item transfer range increased from 150 to 300. Quality of life kind of cool. Nice. 
tree respawn interval reduced from 5 to 3 minutes. The biggest change of the patch, honestly. Um, the following abilities no longer destroy trees. This is interesting. Earth Spirit, Mortimer Kisses, Meteor Hammer, and Macro Pyre. This is like a... I don't, I don't know how you arrive at this change, but I mean, those... I know that, like, Earth Spitter would just... It destroys like a huge amount of it, it used to destroy a huge amount of trees and stuff. Macrobire, same thing. Um, Mortimer kisses. I mean, I, could, I guess I didn't understand that too. Meteor hammer. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. Um, I don't know how much that really matters, but sh yeah. As a, as a way of opening up vision and stuff, I mean, being able to destroy trees is actually kind of a, a valuable thing. So they've and they've reduced the radius of tree destruction of the following abilities. Wild Axes, Gust, Power Cogs, Vacuum, Fire Remnant, Relocate, Tether, Blinding Light, Skewer, Doppelganger, Telekinesis, Fire Snap, Cookie, Spit Out, Spider Legs, Blast Off, Toss, Snowball, Power Shot, and Willow Wisp. So that's, we'll have, to, I mean, I'm sure we'll see what the effect of that is in games. I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to just test all this right now, but interesting, just making trees uh, and vision uh, a little bit easier to do, or, or, well, a little bit more valuable and, and less easy to just destroy and get vision all the time in the, in, in the jungle. Anyway, interesting changes. Uh, item updates, here we go. Shared tangos now expire after 40 seconds. Tango pooling has been removed from the strategy phase UI. Interesting. So mid laners are no longer going to get pooled tangos. That is a dead thing, which is crazy. Like, that's been in the game for a very long time. This is an interesting thing. A lot of mid laners are just going to have to get used to buying tangos and not uh, expecting... It, I guess, is sort of an awkward thing, and, and it... S it simplifies things. It just means you have to buy a tango instead of just maximizing your stats and damage. So that's interesting. This next change, Necronomicon removed. This is as far as I got when I first started reading the patch, and I had to take a break because I th this this broke me. I don't know how this I don't know how this is possible. This is crazy. So. Um, so, I mean, I don't know how you arrive at this, but I mean, they've been trying to balance Necronomicon for a long time. Uh, I guess just the idea of just summoned units and there's there's very hard to figure out how you balance that and still make it a viable item and i think they've just arrived on we're just going to remove it and that's that's pretty crazy i mean a lot of heroes that depend on that like beastmaster lycan it just they're going to have to figure out something else and helm of the dominator i imagine is going to come way back um if it's not removed. Cooldown reduced from 35 to 25 on Satanic. Unholy Range Rage can no longer be dispelled. Unholy Rage now applies a basic dispel on cast. Wow. That's a pretty big buff to Satanic. Battle Fury. Mana regen reduced from 3.25 to 2.75. Eh. Creep. Cleave damage reduced from 50% to 40%. Okay, so a bit... Bit of a nerf to Battle Fury. That's actually, I guess that's fair. I, I expected something like that. Um, this is only creep damage too, so it just nerfs the farming of it. I mean, I don't. Who knows how impactful that is? But uh, prob, you know, pretty predictable that this was going to be coming. Um, so maybe I'll do it like this, so I'm not spoiling. Meteor Hammer, the next item everyone is looking to get nerfed. Stun duration reduced from 1.75 to 1.5. Building damage per second increased from 50 to 60. Wow, so just a lower stun. That's it. Meteor Hammer, still a big item. Okay, Abyssal Blade, this is a big one. No longer has a blink effect. Now a melee ability. Yup, that was broken. Guys, I, I mean, people have been, like, not building anyone that's... Like, Abyssal Blade used to be considered to be bad. People thought the Abyssal wasn't very good. And then they put a blink ability on it, 
and it became like the best item in the game. And now it's back to being the old abyssal effect. Um, this is a pretty big nerf uh, to a lot of melee heroes, like Ursa. Uh, I mean, even like Jug, like any melee hero that was just buying abyssal. Am like it's just it. This is a nerf to their mobility. I think it was overly strong. Good nerf. A uh, bit sad to see it go. I, I liked it because I like abyssal blade, but. Recipe cost reduced from 1750 to 1550. Total cost is 300 cheaper with vitality boost booster cost reduction change. Okay, so it's a cheaper item. So, you know, still good, uh, but it uh, doesn't have that blink, so pretty big. Tranquil Boots, movement speed reduction reduced from si 70 to 65. Okay, small nerf. Cast range reduced from 575 to 550. Okay. Small cast range reduced. Same thing with Wind Waker. Movement speed reduced on boosted travel from 110 to 100. Uh, 10 movement speed reduction on level 2. Uh, Swift Blink no longer ignores movement speed limit. That's the only nerf to Swift Blink, so I think Swift Blink's still a pretty good item. Uh, Aether Lens cast range bonus reduced from 250 to 225. Okay, small nerf to Aether Lens. I think still pretty good. Mirrored in Octarine Core. Okay, here we go. Alright. Hey. Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh... Sentry Ward cost reduced from 75 to 50. That's awesome. I, I, I can't believe that uh, they... Uh, I would I expected them to remove the limit on sentries. I just fucking hate that. And considering that they removed... They removed Necrobook, I really expected it. So, wow. Vision even more... Even rougher. True Sight Radius reduced also on sentries. They fucking nerfed sentries. Holy shit, dude. This might be the Invis patch. Wow. Okay. Manta style. Melee illusions incoming damage reduced from 350 to 300. Ranged illusions incoming damage reduced from 400 to 300. Cooldown for range heroes reduced from 45 to 30. Same as melee. So there's no difference in melee and range cooldown on Manta now, which is probably just good for clarity's sake, I think. Uh, and uh, the... Illusions for Manta buffed, so Manta just like got way better. Um, Helm of Iron Will armor increased to f from five to six. Cool. Armlet, uh, another armor p point on it from that, and the active health drain reduced on Armlet from fifty to forty. So wow, they're fucking still buffing Armlet. Armlet just might be a really good item right now, actually. Energy booster uh, cost reduced from nine hundred to eight hundred. Vitality booster, 100 gold less as well. That's nice for supports, as, as long as they didn't change boots. That uh, makes it easier to get arcanes now. Harder to ask, recipe cost increased from 900 to 1300. Wow. they That's... Fuck, man. That's just, with no changes to heart, that's just... Heart just became 400 gold more expensive. That's... Yeah, that's a nerf. The recipe cost on Aether Lens, another 100 gold as well, so uh, that's actually two nerfs to Aether. Uh, recipe cost increased on Aeon Disc. I guess that's to account for the components becoming cheaper. So still, I think actually Aeon Disc actually became 100 gold cheaper. Strangely enough. Uh, Black King Bar cooldown increased from 70 to 75. Duration rescaled from 10 9 from 10 to 5 till oh no so BKB interesting so instead of there being six different uh, durations you get from Black King Barnell it starts at nine and is only four steps and stays at six so actually like the minute you know the minimum amount of duration you're gonna have on BKB is actually higher now um, interesting. Duration on Clarity Potions, uh, reduced from 30 to 25, 180 mana to 150. Uh, that's a nerf to Clarity, it's 30 less mana. Uh, you get it faster, I guess, but... 
bottle cost increase from 625 to 675 mana regen reduced from 75 to 65 HP regen reduced from 125 to 115 so yep there's bottle nerfs bottle bottle was extremely strong it's, uh, usually a lot of teams I would see would have at least like one or if not two bottles on the team Headdress now provides 0.5 HP regen to the holder. Okay, a bit of a buff to Headdress. Ring of Basilius, mana regen aura reduced from 1.4 to 1. Now provides 0.6 mana regen to the holder. So better, Ring of Bassi is slightly worse for your team, but better for the person who is holding it. Uh, only by 0.2 mana. Buckler now provides plus 1 armor to the holder. Recipe cost increased by 50. Matches the other early aura items, okay. Pipe of Insight, HP regen aura increased from 2 to 2.5. Same on mech, mana regen aura increased from 1.5 to 1.75 on Veil of Discord. Mana regen aura increased. So they're buffing all the kind of aura items. Uh, Vlad's got mana regen buff of 1.4 to 1.75. Region cost reduced from 600 to 500. So, man, Vlad's Vlad's again. There's a lot of offlaners that are going to be building Vlad's and Helm of the Dominator, I think. Four staff, Ring of Regeneration replaced with Fluffy Hat. 150 health instead of Regen on four staff. That's probably fine because a lot of the time it's like supports building four staff, and supports might be building like, you know, Tranquils or Arcanes. I think, I think the flat health will actually just help them be survivable instead of having regen they may not need. Arcane Pike, or Hurricane Pike, <laughs> now has 200 health instead of, instead of 2.5 HP regen. Intelligence increased from 13 to 15. Nice Hurricane Pike buff. Diffusal Blade. Mana break damage per mana burned increased from 80% to 100%. Mana break on melee illusions reduced from 16 to 12. These are the important data. Whoops. Uh, agility increased from 20 to 24. Intelligence increased. Wow, so just diffusal buffed. Just just flat buff on diffusal, 100%. Uh, just... Just a better item. <laughs> like, pretty much across the board on that. Uh, solar Crest. Recipe change to Medallion, Crown, Wind Lace, and a 900 gold recipe. That's amazing, actually, because now, and it's, yeah, it's 1150 gold cheaper. I guess it just doesn't have the stats anymore, but it still has stats. Wow. Armor reduced from 8 to 6. All stats reduced from 10 to 5. Shine active armor reduced from 8 to 6. Shine attack speed addition and removal reduced from 80 to 65. So, wow, Solar Crest has become a much more affordable item probably easier to build on supports all of the items that you build into solar crest are small uh they give like a crown for stats wind lace for movement speed and medallion which is your like mana regen and then 900 gold recipe which isn't that bad that is a that solar crest is going to be fucking an item this patch uh vanguard block chance increased from 50 to 60 so vanguard buffed a bit block chance same on abyssal increased 10 percent and same on crimson guard okay all the stat items have been reduced five gold this might have some implications for beginning of the game buying stat items uh slippers of agility gauntlets and mantle of intelligence from 145 to 140 Bracer, HP regen increased from 0.75 to 1. Wow, the only stat item that got buffed is Bracer. And I actually low-key think that Bracer is really fucking good because it's damage and HP regen, which is, like, really good. And it's a cheap item, so Bracer, probably a really good item in this patch. Uh, Sanji Yasha, attack speed reduced from 16 to 12. Same on Yasha and Kaya. Mana regen amp increased from 24% to 50% on Kaya. Oh, that's just your mana regen, though. Wow. Okay. Same with all the items it builds into. Dragon Lance agility increased from 14 to 16. Okay. Uh, mechanism mana cost reduced from 200 to 100. 
that's actually really nice for mech. It's actually quite nice. Um, Mage Slayer, an item that nobody builds. Recipe cost reduced from 600 to 400. Okay. Uh, blade mail recipe cost reduced from 675 to 575. All right. Uh, Echo saber strength increased from 12 to 15. All right. Helm of the Dominator still in the game. Still in the game, <laughs> which is good because the lack of having an Echo book in the game now will mean that summons will be even better. So I think I think Helm of the Dominator is going to be your straight up like rush build for like Beastmaster, like Lycan again, that kind of thing. Yeah, that 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 fucking mana regen is crazy, dude. Like twenty to fifty percent. That just seems really big. Okay. Uh Hell of the Dominator, bounty reduced from 200 to 100. So, wow, like, killing Helm... They, they're buffing fucking Dominator along with removing Necro. So, you get less from killing Bounty Creeps now by 100 gold. Renamed from Helm of the Dominator 2 to Helm of the Dom, Helm of the Overlord to add, and added to the shop UI as an independent item. What? Renamed from Helen, Helm of the Overlord, Hel, renamed from Helm of the Dominator 2 to Helm of the Overlord and added the shop as an independent item, can now dominate up to two units. So, Helm of the Overlord is going to be the fucking shit. It's going to be, that is your new necro book, is Helm of the Overlord. Very interesting. Ugh. Dude. Okay. Shadow Blade, cooldown reduced from 28 to 25. Whatever. Uh... That's a bit rough, I guess, on s some heroes. It's going to make, like, fucking Slark potentially want to build Shadowblade slightly more, I guess. Silver Edge mana regen increased. I didn't... Oh, yeah, Silver Edge gives mana regen now. Mana, uh, mana regen on Silver Edge increased from 3 to 4. Intelligence bonus increased from 10 to 15. Uh, that's interesting. I guess... I, ca I can't think of what that... That's just sort of a nice quality of life thing for Silver Edge, I guess. Divine Rapier no longer provides true strike, fam. They fucking nerfed Rapier. I don't know if they've ever done that. This item has never changed. The fucking changelog on Divine Rapier is like two sentences. It's like added to the game. So, wow, they removed true strike on Divine and increased the damage from 300 to 350. That's... Fuck, man, weird. That's a That's a weird change. I guess people were buying a lot of divines. It was getting, it was seeing a lot of use in pro play even. So, okay, Monkey King bar proc chance increased from 75 to 80 percent. That's a nice buff actually, because that's true strike. So that's that's really nice. Um, Mjolnir chain lightning damage increased from 170 to 180. Static charge damage increased from 20 200 to 225. So buffing Mjolnir, good for Maelstrom builders. Soul Ring recipe cost reduced from 275 to 225. Very nice Soul Ring change, I guess. Soul, soul Ring is a little bit weak, I think, but uh, yeah, it does. You know, having not having HP regen would be nice to have again on Soul Ring. Quelling Blade bonus damage reduced from 13 to 12. Well, fuck everyone's CS then, I guess, right? Fuck, fuck everybody. What? Which blade? The Witchblade Poison Attack now has True Strike. So you're always going to be able to slow someone with Evasion with Witchblade. That's an interest. That's interesting. Okay, Shiva's Guard. Cooldown reduced from 30 seconds to 27. That's a very strange change. Urn of Shadows. Mana Regen reduced from 1.5 to 1.4. Okay. Scythe of Ice. Cooldown reduced from 22 to 20. Talisman of Evasion, cost reduced from 1400 to 1300. Veil of Discord, cast range increased from 1000 to 1200. Cooldown reduced from 25 to 22. Okay. Holy Locket, passive charge regeneration time reduced from 15 to 10 seconds. Man, Holy Locket is becoming a fucking baller item, dude. Actually. 
that's 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 a stick charge every 10 seconds with that like that's that you can cast on other people that's i think supports should be building this honestly it's it's a good item infused raindrops minimum damage threshold increased from 50 to 75 that's actually interesting that means that like radiance won't trigger raindrops anymore and a few other things that i think that are low enough that they actually won't trigger raindrops now so that's actually that's that's interesting uh wind waker cooldown reduced from 23 to 18 five seconds less on wind waker that's a fucking nice little buff to wind waker still think it's a broken item very good potentially uh dagon cast range increased oh shit dagon 100 100 cast range increase on every level that you upgrade dagon so you're getting cast range increase now for upgrading dagon even more so Recipe cost reduced by 50 gold. This is this is a joke change. I mean, uh, people are ca calling about Dagon to be buffed, and it's so so you get more cast range, guys. Zap people from further away. Rod of Atos projectile speed increased from 1500 to 1750. The that's interesting. Same thing with Gleipnir. So they buffed Gleipnir. Jesus, I, this item is very good. Uh. Bloodthorn recipe cost reduced from 1,000 to 800. Bloodthorn buff, oh, damn. Enchanted mangoes can now be sold. They can now be sold. Smoker deceit now dispelled by the fountain. So nerfing fountain griefers, that is fine. We can, fuck fountain griefers. Uh oh god. Neutral item updates. Are we ready? Royal Jetty Jelly, everyone's favorite that they buffed multiple times to make it more easy to use, and they've now removed it. No more Royal Jelly. No more free regen randomly in games. Broom handle damage increased by two. Ocean Heart, River, HP, and mana... HP, MP mana regen increased from 8.4 to 10.5. So Ocean Heart, even better. Chipped Vest... Health region increased from 3.5 to 5, and the damage return increased from 28 to 17 to 30 to 20 uh, melee range. So chip vest buffed. Wow. Trusty shovel now drops an enchanted mango instead of TP scroll. So now you can get mana regen from the trusty shovel as well instead of TPs, which um, considering that's actually like a bad trade because TPs are actually even more expensive now. So it actually would have been nice if TP scrolls kept coming from Shovel, but that would just mean that Shovel is starting to become extremely broken. So uh, it's kind of nice that Shovel can now give you a Salve, a Mango, or a Neutral Creep, which is like Experience in Gold, or a Bounty Rune. Um, so just perfect perfect support item. You still have to buy your scroll, your Teleport Scrolls, but you'll probably be dying anyway, so those are free for you. Imp Claw, damage increased from 24 to 26. That's cool. Philosopher's Stone, the stolen league item, is the GPM increased from 70 to 80. Uh, okay, they buffed Philosopher's Stone. Secondary attributes on Pupil's Gift increased from 13 to 14. Pupil's Gift buff. Grove Bow magic resistance reduced from 12. Resist, re, uh, well, Grove Bow magic reduction resistance reduction increased from 12% to 15%, so Grove Bow buffed. Bullwhip movement speed change reduced from 20 to 18. Cooldown reduced from 12 to 11. Mana regen reduced from 3 to 2.5. So this was a good item. This is a very nice item to have on like a support. Uh, Quicksilver Amulet. Passive movement speed reduced from 5% to 4%. Active movement speed reduced from 5% to 4%. Active attack speed increased from 15 to 20. Projectile attack animation increased from 30 to 40. So, slightly less movement speed on the amulet, more attack speed and projectile speed. So, which, that's, that's, you know, probably good, actually. I think the attack speed and the movement speed are more useful. Mindbreaker silence duration increased from 1.5 to 1.75. Meh. Uh, cooldown redu reduced from 15 to 12, so procs more, lasts longer. It's mind breaker buff. Intelligence bonus on psychic headband increased from 12% to 16%. Wow, this item I think is like low key and extremely good. It's plus 16% intelligence is just like pretty good. Uh, with the disengage active, this is very nice. 
Elven tunic movement speed reduced from 8 to 7. Spider legs active movement speed reduced from 24 to 22. Paladin sword now provides 8% spell life steal, which is kind of nice because now casters will also have a reason to use the Paladin's sword. Sorry, I didn't realize I didn't have music on for a second on the stream. Telescope attack and cast range reduced from 135 to 125. Small nerf. Illusionist cape illusion bonus damage reduced from 8% to 6%. Okay, that's a nerf. I think illusionist cape is still really good though. Spell prism all stats reduced from 12 to 6. Okay, the other attributes are very good on spell prism anyway. Cooldown reduction. Flicker movement speed. Reduced from 40 to 35. Now always goes in a random forward direction with a random distance between 200 and 600. Okay, flickers is inc flickers incredible. If that means that like you always go in the direction your hero is facing, that it, flicker is now reliable escape or reliable engage, relatively. The leveler now grants 5 armor, attack speed reduced from 60 to 50, ninja gear movement speed reduced from 30 to 25, agility increased from 20 to 24, okay, uh, let's see, I need my hero patch notes, the suspense, <laughs> we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there, uh, I think we're nearing the end of the item changes, so, trickster cloak no longer interrupts channeling abilities, I don't know what that who that will affect. Uh, active can now be dispelled. Whoops. Active can now be dispelled. Invisibility now... Oh, this is a trickster cloak. Oh. Oh, so you can trickster cloak during, like, witch doctor alt or something. That's cool. You can go invisible. Active can now be dispelled. Invisibility now provides phased movement. Whoa. Now has a 0.2 second fade time okay penta edge sword melee attack range increased from 80 to 100 maim chance increased from 20 to 25 okay x machina cooldown reduced from 30 to 25 force force boots now also provides 30 hp regen seer stone reveal cooldown reduced from 70 to 60 now grants true sight at the destination wow these tier five or tier four or whatever items are getting buffed reveal duration from five to six Book of the Dead, still in the game, so Necrobook is a tier 4 fucking item now. Cooldown reduced from 90 to 80, unit damage increased from 50 to 75%. Book of Shadows, cooldown reduced from 15 to 8. Wow. Hero updates, here we go. Starting with our friend Abaddon. Base health regen increased from 0.5 to 1. Shard upgrade now also reduces miscoil and aphotic shield cooldowns by 1 second. Okay, uh, some changes to Mist Coil, Backswing reduced, Heal and Damage rescaled, uh, slight nerf at the early game, buff late game. Self damage is now 50% of the values in sort of fixed number. Aphotic Shield, Backswing reduced from 0.5 to 0.33, mana cost increased at, at later levels, Borrowed Time, Scepter duration increased. Uh, and then some talent changes, nothing too major, just ranges and damage. Alchemist. The only change we got for Alchemist is the Grievel's Greed. Gold bonus cap reduced from 18 scaling to 27 to 15 scaling to 24. So, less gold on Alk. Probably a good thing. Ancient Apparition, mana cost on Ice Vortex re buffed at, or is reduced at later levels. Cooldown increased from 4... Oh, I didn't realize our Ice Vortex was a flat 4 seconds. Now it scales down, so he'll have it less early game. Chilling Touch Scepter now reduces mana cost by 50%. Probably good. Anti-Mage reworked shard upgrade. This shard was uh, a targetable one that you could activate. You could activate Spell Shield and then... Well, you could you can use it and then use spell shield. It, it would blink an illusion at someone, and then you could use spell shield, and they could cast a spell on the spell shield of your illusion, and that was it. Uh, now causes blink to have 300 range and reduces the cooldown by two. So that's actually it's an interesting shard. It like fakes people out thinking you're initiating on them and stuff. 
Uh, mana void, mana cost rescaled from 125 to uh, to 275 to 100, 200, 300. Okay, a little bit of a nerf later. Blink, fragment scepter illusion incoming damage reduced. Uh, fragment scepter outgoing damage increased. He no longer has the blink cast range talent as well. He now has 0.6 max mana burn and... He doesn't have blink cooldown talent either. He now has a one second mana void stun. So that's that's those are both probably good nerfs to anti mage. Just giving him like less range on blink, uh, less cooldown reduction on blink. You just could never, f you could just never catch him. Uh, and that is not fun. Um, fuck this hero. Uh, Arc warden. Shard magic resistance increased from 20 to 40 percent. Shard now also slows enemies by 20 percent in, in magnetic field. So that's that's cool. Re more of a reason to build the magnetic field shard. Less flux cast range on his level 10 talent and less and more health. So I guess more reasons to go tanky. Axe attack point reduced from 0.5 to 0.4. Scepter up upgrade on Berserker's Call cooldown reduced uh, or increased from 2 to 3. Shard now also increases proc chance by 10 on Counter Helix. That's cool. Nerf to the mana regen talent and change from attack speed talent to strength. They're giving up on trying to make him a right clicker. That's good. Bane reworked shard upgrade causes Bane. Brain Sap to become a 550 targeted AoE spell. Secondary units heal for 25%. Reworked Shard Upgrade it reduces Fiend's Grip cooldown by 45 seconds and causes Fiend's Grip to create two uncontrollable illusions that channel Fiend's Grip on the target. Illusions take 700% damage. Uh, wow, that's... I think both of... Those are... That's, Bane might be scary, actually. Brain set, backswing, backswing reduced from 0.84 to 0.5. Bit of a more round number. Enfeeble attack damage reduced. Attack damage reduction increased from 25 to 55 to 45 to 60. Health restoration redu uh, reduction increased from 25 to 45 to 60. Wow, Jesus. Enfeeble is... Cooldown rescaled from 20 to 8 to 28 to 7. Cast range reduced from 1,100 uh, 1, to... Scaling from lower to from 800 to 1100 now. Duration increased. Okay, so Bane changed and the talent 12% spell amp changed to three minus three second brain sap cooldown. 15 talent, 100 cast range to five percent fiends grip max mana drain. Oh man. There's still so much more. There's still so much more. Rework shard on Batrider now causes Flame Break to have two charges and apply Sticky Nate Palm charges on impact. That's pretty good. Flame Break backswing reduced uh, from 0.63 to 0.4. Range reduced from 1500 to 1300. Debuff no longer stacks with multiple instances, but instead adds to the duration of Flame Break. Okay. Uh, Flaming Lasso, backswing reduced from 0.64 to 0.4. Damage per second increased from 20, 40, 60 to 35, 55, 75. So Flaming Lasso cast is faster, but damage reduced. Not much of a change there, really. Uh, let's see, level 10 talents from 4 armor to 6. Two frame blade charges... 20% magic resistance, so he no longer has two charges of flame break. Beast Master. This hero is getting a lot of changes here, and it's not a big surprise because they removed Necro Book, which is basically what every Beast Master was building. So, base base armor increased by one. Dive Bomb Shard no longer grants free Hawk control. Shard, Dive Bomb Shard now has a 1200 cast range. Dive Bomb Shard stun duration increased from one to two. Dive Bomb Shard damage increased from 175 to 250. Dive Bomb Shard can now target couriers. Hawk Shard also lowers the cooldown by 15 seconds. <laughs> okay, so they removed like old school Beastmaster being able to control the Hawks, but you can still like park them places. Like, you could even send them behind towers and like kill fucking couriers with them, I guess. If you wanted. Wild Axes. Sep 
Protector now also increases damage by 40. Mana cost reduced from 80 to 65. Buffing the Wild Axes. Primal Roar movement speed duration increased from 3 to 3, 3, 5, 4. So more movement speed on his alt. That's that bonus, which is... That's cool. Um, the level 10 talent, 25 damage to 30. 6 armor on his 15 talent to 300 health. Beastmaster controlled. Is that just everything he controls? Whoa. Level 20 talent changed from 50 wild axe damage to minus 35 second primal roar cooldown. So at level 20 he gets a big reduction on his alt, potentially. Level 25 talent increased from 20 inner beast attack speed to 30. Level 25 talent from 200, 350 health beastmaster control to 4% wild axe damage amp per stack. So switching these around a bit. See how beastmaster fares in this patch. Uh, Bloodseeker, backswing reduced on Blood Rage from 0.63 to 0.4. Rupture now deals 10% of the target's current health as damage on cast. So that's cool. A bit of a bu burst damage on Rupture. Damage reduced from 36 for uh, scaling to 60% to 33, scaling to 55%. Level 10 talent, 6 armor to 7. 70 and level 15 talent, 75 blood right damage to 85. Bounty Hunter, rework shard. Shard walk now grants you 40% reduced incoming damage while invisible. Attacking out of invisibility stuns the target for one second. Lowers cooldown by five seconds. So the shard might be very good. Shadow walk no longer pierces spell immunity. Shadow walk, slow. No longer pierces spell immunity. What does that mean? So you could like BKB to re get rid of the slow reduction of Shadow Rock? Strange. I don't fully understand that one. Brewmaster base movement speed increased from 305 to 310. Drunken Brawler passive evasion increased from 8 scaling to 24 to 10 scaling to 25. S primal split, split time reduced from 0.65 to 0.55. Uh, health health rescaled on all the primals shard cooldown for the astral pulse reduced from 20 to seconds to 12 shard void astral pulse cast point reduced as well level 10 talent one second thunderclap slow to 200 thunderclap aoe 12 damage to 15 When he attacks out of stuff, it slows the target. It doesn't slow through BK me anymore. All, also, Bounty is nutty pause for now with Shard. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I think Bounty has been a good item for a while, too. Now, he gets... But, I mean, this is technically a bit of a... This Shard is nice, but that stun, that's that's going to be that's gonna be pretty crazy. Okay. Uh, Bristleback. Fuck this hero. Base mana regen increased from 0 to 0.25. So they gave Bristle mana regen. Awesome. Quill Spray, base damage increased from 20 to scaling to 80 to 25, scaling to 85. Stack damage reduced from 30, scaling to 36 to 28, scaling to 34. So, wow, a bit better upfront damage from Quill Spray, but less on the stacks. Yeah, that's interesting. Vicious, vicious nasal goo, armor loss per stack increased. 0.1 at all levels. Scepter removes cast time. That's nuts. That's okay. The the scepter might be kind of scary on Bristle now. Level 10 talent increased from 15 movement speed to 20. Uh, level 10, 2.5 mana regen to 2. So they've actually nerfed the mana regen on his level 10 talent. Uh, 15 and plus 5 attack speed on his level 15 talent. Brood Mother. Let's see. These are actually a lot of changes here. Holy shit. Agility increased by four. Incapacitating Bite has now been removed. Spawn Spiderlings debuff duration increased from five to 20 seconds. Spawn Spiderlings debuff stacks. Multiple instances of spires will come out. What? So you can potentially...
Oh, they completely changed. They completely changed Broodmother. This is a different hero now. What? Holy fuck. I'm not even there yet. Okay. Um, spawn spiralings, debuff duration increased from 5 to 20. Spawn spiralings, debuff stacks multiple times. Multiple instances of spires will come out, so you can just fucking charge something full of spiders and then it'll blow up with a bunch of spiders. Rework the shard. Now causes Silken Bola to be a 550 AoE spell and increases the miss rate to 80%. Jesus. Spin web count and charges increase from 2 scaling to 8 to 3 scaling to 9, so more webs. Movement speed reduced from 25 scaling to 55 to 18 scaling to 54, so she's even slower. Well, she's slower in webs. She's slightly slower in webs. Replenish time improved from 45 to 40 seconds. Insatiable hunger. Her previous alt is now a basic ability. Mana cost reduced from 100 to 50, 60, 70, 80. Damage reduced from 60, 100, 140 to 30, 40, 45, 50. Life steal rescaled from 60, 100, 140 to 70, 80, 6, 90, 100. So more life steal on it. Slightly less damage though. So uh, quite a bit less damage actually. Um, Cooldown reduced from 45 to 40, 35, 30, 25. Duration reduced from 14 seconds to 8, 10, 12, 14. So they've just totally rescaled things to make it a basic ability. Spawn Spiderlings is now an ultimate ability. Cooldown rescaled from 11, 10, 9, 8 to 9, 8, 7. Lower cooldown. Damage increased from 80, from 70, 140, 210 to 280, 280 to 300, 370, and 440. So the, her ult, Spawn, Spawn Spiderlings, actually does a shitload of damage now, actually. Spawn count rescaled from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 3, 4, 5. Cast range increased from 700 to 900. And they just they just removed her passive. She doesn't have a passive <laughs> anymore, I guess, because Sol Silken Bola is now a basic ability and no longer roots. It slows the enemy by 25, scaling to 55 for six seconds. Now causes the enemy to miss 40% of attacks, deals 100, scaling to 160 impact damage, causes attacks on the target to deal five, scaling to eight magic damage per hit costs 70 scaling to 85 mana and has a 24 scaling to 12 second cooldown. Cast range is 750. So she has a slow, she has bonus damage and life steal, and she has movement speed. But she doesn't have spiderlings early in the game. Wow. Um and her like range uh, uh the thing, you know, sp like you used to do with nuking a creep with spawn spiralings is now silk and bola. And uh you'd get extra magic damage per hit. Okay, well, brood is a different hero now. Brood is a different hero. Okay, Centaur War Runner AOE increased from 315 to 300, so Stomp got better. Double Edge Cast Point reduced. Shard Slow increased. Shard Buff. Uh, Duration increased from 12 to 15 seconds. I don't. I had never built that, so. Retaliate strength damage return increased from 20% scaling to 35% to 20 scaling to 38. So late day, late game retaliate damage even more. Stampede cooldown reduced from 110 scaling to 90 to 90 at all levels. So that's just a buff to Stampede. Uh, damage reduced from 200% 
scaling to 300%, uh, to 150 to 300%, so slightly less damage reduction on Stampede early game. Scepter now also increases duration by one second. Some talent changes, uh, not much, uh, slight changes here, a little bit more movement speed uh, or, or health regen at level 10. One second Stampede duration has been changed to six armor. Chaos Knight. Be interested to see. I like this hero. Backswing. Chaos Bolt. Backswing reduced from 0.75 to 0.4. So you can just stun faster. That's cool. Shard Illusion now always lasts six seconds rather than duration of the stun. So less randomness on how long the Shard Illusion would last based on the uh, stun duration of Chaos Bolt. Level 15 talent, 14% cooldown reduction, now changed to 35% cleave. So it, wow, Chaos Knight just gets cleave at 15 now. Crazy. Um, level 20 talent changed from 8 second phantasm duration to 0.5 second min max chaos bolt duration. And his 25 talent has been changed from the min, the chaos bolt duration to 10 second phantasm duration. So it, uh, yeah, level 25, that's a bit better, I'd say, for Chaos Knight. A bit longer on his illusions. Um, Chen base mana regen increased from 0 to 0.5. Hand of, God, Hand of God heal increased 25 at all levels. Divine favor, shard mana cost reduced 200 to 100. Shard cast range increased... 500 to 600 shard cooldown and reduced from 35 to 25. Okay. Um, slight rebalancing. Oh, level 10 talent changed from 175 cast range to penitence deals 250 fucking damage. What? Dude, that's amazing. That's going to be like a hundred percent of the time. You're going to take that. Now Penitence actually does something. That's awesome. Clinks. Strength change from 14 plus 22... To, or 14, 14 plus 22.2 at all levels to 16 plus 2. So... He will have... Like, more early health. Uh, I think late game, that means he'll have less health, though, than he did before. Scaling is less. Skeleton walk, shard, skeleton duration reduced from 60 to 45 seconds. Burning army, scepter spawn interval reduced from 0.7 to 0.5. Scepter cooldown reduced from 90 to 80. Level 15 talent increased from 25 searing arrow damage to 30. Clockwork shard, the jetpack shard movement speed bonus reduced from 22 to 20. Shard cooldown reduced from 20 to 16. So he's going to have more jetpacks. Slower jetpacks, though. Uh, four armor at level 10 to 5. 15 movement speed to 20 at level 10. Crystal Maiden. Rework Shard. Now allows you to move, cast, and attack during freezing field. Your movement speed is reduced by 75% during this. And the freezing field allows your movement... And the freezing field follows your movement. Interruptions and silences will still interrupt the spell. <laughs> Okay, that's that's neat. Good for you, CM. Level 10 talent changed from 75 cast range to 125 Crystal Nova AoE. That's actually probably really good. Um, Darkseer. Iron sh Let's see the Darkseer changes. This is crazy, actually. There's a lot of Darkseer changes. It's probably a nerf. Ion Shell. Damage interval increased from 0.1 to 0.15. That's means it's doing damage slightly less often. Uh, damage increased from 24 scaling to 90 to, to 30 scaling to 90. So more damage on the ticks. So that's probably a buff, actually, die on shell early. Mana cost increased from 100 scaling to 130 to 110 scaling to 140. Max Scepter max health reduced from 350 to 300. Okay. Vacuum. Backswing reduced from 0.7 to 0.4. Normal punch. Shard max distance required 
reduced from 1,500 to 900. Shard illusion outgoing damage 40 to 80 percent. Shard illusion income damage 300 to 200. Okay, crazy, weird. Uh, I don't know if people are building this a lot, but yeah. Level 10 talent from 60 vacuum AOE to six armor. Yeah, the backswing, no, the, the vacuum backswing reduced from 0.7 to 0.4. They're reducing the backswings on a lot of spells. Yeah, like, um, after you cast, like, well, I think it actually means that it, it casts it faster. Or it's, it's after you've cast the spell, I think, actually. It just means you can move or do other things quicker. Time for you to move. Yeah. Uh, so th they've re they've, they sort of switched the level 10 and 15 talents. Of, so you now have the option to take armor earlier. At level 15, you can take 100 Vacuum AoE. So the the Vacuum AoE talent, which I think a lot of people are taking, is actually buffed. So there's 40 more Vacuum AoE at level 15 now on Vacuum. So it's 100 Vacuum AoE at level 15. That's actually nutty. Like, that's like a fucking black hole. Um, so level 20 talent changed from 1 second wall replica slow to th minus 30 second wall replica cooldown so he's going to have wall up more often now that's probably really good actually this seems like an overall buff to Darkseer that's cool um, Dark Willow base health regen increased from 0 to 0.5 Shadow Realm cooldown reduced from 32 to f so what is this yeah so early she'll have Shadow Realm more often Eight seconds less cooldown on Shadow Realm. Jesus. Right click Dark Willow coming at you. Uh, Bramble Maze damage rescaled from 125 scaling to 200 to 120 scaling to 240. Cast range reduced from 100. Well, Jesus. Cast range on Bramble Maze was 1100 scaling to 1400, and now it was 1000 scaling to 1300. Terrorize cast range reduced from 1300 to 1200. Cursed Crown Shard also reduces delay by one second. Her level 15 talent. She's lost cast range on her level 15 talent and has turned into 160 Cursed Crown AoE. So now she also has a gigantic stun with her Cursed Crown. Awesome. Uh, Dazzle. Turn rate improved 0.6 to 0.7. Oh, good. Sh reworked Shard upgrade now causes Poison Touch to hex affected targets for 1.25 seconds. What? <laughs> That's okay. Shard, man. Fuck. You get a hex on Dazzle now with Shard. That's. Jesus, actually. That's really good. Poison Touch now does its first instance of damage immediately on impact. Shadow Wave Scepter Heal increased from 60 to 100. And the Scepter Damage increased from 80 to 100 on Shadow Wave. Shallow Grave. Cast Time improved from 0.4 to 0.3. Cooldown reduced from 42 scaling to 18 to 36 scaling to 18. So sh you have Shallow Grave. That's a buff to Shallow Grave. You, that's quite a bit. That's 8 seconds less cooldown early game. And it's faster to cast. So yeah. Maybe worth taking. Level 15 talent change from 200, 150 cast range to 250 heal on Shallow Grave end. Shallow Grave heals for 250, potentially, when Dazzle hits 15. That's actually... Yeah, means it's not like an awful spell. Wow. Death Prophet. Death Prophet nerfs, hopefully. I, I think this, this is probably going to be nerfs to Death Prophet. Attack point reduced from 0.56 to 0.5. Base damage reduced from 51 to 63 to 47 to 57. So, wow, she lost four damage, foot base damage at all levels. Well, just min-max, four, four base damage across the board. She will do four less damage. Wow. Movement speed reduced from 335 to 320. So she's slower. Good. Fuck you. 
Reworked shard increases siphon sh charges by one and causes enemies to be feared for two seconds if they're siphoned for four seconds consecutively. So if she gets the whole siphon off with her shard, she she'll root you or fear you for two seconds. Crypt Swarm Backswing reduced from 0.85 to 0.5. That's a buff. Level 15 talent from 150 cast range to 6% movement speed. What the fuck? Uh, level 20 talent increased from minus 3 second Crypt Swarm cooldown to 3.5. So they nerfed her base damage a lot. Like, 4 base damage is pretty big. They nerfed her movement speed, which is another big problem with her. But they actually gave her, like, attack point reduction and backswing reduction on her Crypt Swarm, so I don't know. Hopefully uh, that means that we won't see Death Prophet off lane all the time. Maybe she'll be back to being a mid laner. Hard to say. Disruptor shard uh, buffs on Thunderstrike. Radius increased from 500 to 650. Shard now also increases... Now always increases the radius, rather only on allies. Shard allied bonus duration from 1 to 1.25. Cooldown on Glimpse reduced from 60 40... 60 scaling to 18 to 48 scaling to 18. So early game glimpse have it way more. Um, talents change on static drum duration increased. Level 15 cast range talent replaced with 275 glimpse arrival damage. Level 20 talent from kinetic field grants true strike to two second kinetic field duration that sucks <laughs> he had free D wording at level 20 on disruptor but now he no longer has this level 25 talent increased from eight seconds on glimpse to minus 11 level 25 talent from plus three seconds kinetic field duration to plus 275 static storm aoe he will have a gigantic static storm now that is scary level 25 disruptor talent actually Doom. This is a crazy patch, man. This is a lot of change. Like, I'm not even halfway into this. Jesus. Alright. Doom. Base armor increased 0 to 3. Base damage increased from 54 to 70 to 58 to 68. So, fuck, man. Level 1, level one Doom has plus 4 more base damage now. Base attack time improved from 2 to 1.9 is one of the base worst attack animations in the game. Devour no longer provides health regen. Backspring reduced from 0.93 to 0.5. Gold bonus increased from 50 scaling to 200 to 60 scaling to 240. Jesus. Losing the devour on uh, regen, losing the re regen on devour is pretty big nerf to that spell though and actually just doom in general because that is how he sustained. Doom would come into your lane, he would like devour the range creep, and and then just regen off of it, and uh, that was pretty strong. So, yeah, that's a pretty big nerf to Doom. Be right back.
All right, we're back. Okay, so more gold from Devour. No regen. Rip Doom, honestly, I think. Scorched Earth, backswing reduced, backswing reduced. There's a lot of, there's a lot of backswing redu reductions on a lot of spells. I think they're just trying to make it, it's probably just a quality of life thing. I mean, your hero will be able to cast spells and then move more quickly. So, or actually just cast other things as well. So there will be less delay in between casting of spells, really. I think you can actually move to ca uh, cancel backswing, but... You can't like cast other things, I believe is what truly does. Uh, backswing reduction. Scepter no longer reduces cooldown on Doom. Scepter now also increases Doom duration by six seconds. Okay. Weird. Um, bunch of talent changes. Seem to be just moving things around. Level 15 talent changed from 120 Devour bonus gold to Devour can target Ancients. Interesting. Carry Doom, maybe? Level 20 talent changed from Devour can tar target Ancients to 15% Scorched Earth movement speed. Weird. Dragonite. From the anime, I recognize this hero. A uh, fireball shard can now be used in melee form. Has a 600 cast range, and when used that way, compared to 1400 in dragon tail, dragon form. Dragon tail mana cost reduced from 100 to 70, scaling to 100. Cooldown increased from 12 scaling to 9 to 16 scaling to 10. Damage increased from 50 scaling to 125 to 70 scaling to 160. Let's see. The only notable change I'm seeing here is the level 25 talent changed from 1.6 second Dragon Tail to 375 AoE Dragon Tail during Dragon Form. So he has AoE stun in Dragon Form in level 25, potentially. Crazy. Attack point reduced on Drow Ranger from 0.55 to 0.5. Huge changes here. Huge changes. I mean... Her attack point is actually... It's, it's nice. It'll make her feel a little bit more snappy. Uh, frost Shard... Or Frost Arrows Shard Burst slow increase from 25% to 40%. Shards now affect... Cre Shard now affects creeps with the Frost Arrow uh, building up on it. Whoops. Okay, so, well, yeah, that's maybe a buff to farming with shard, like, how do you say? Gust, mana cost reduced from 9 to 70, level 15 talent, to change, cool. Earth Spirit, let's see here. Okay, I hope you get buffed. Boulder Smash, stone slow reduced from 60 to 50, so less slow on Boulder Smash. Geomagnetic Grip, remnant pull speed reduced from 1,000 to 900, same as Boulder Smash. Stone Remnant, Vision Radius reduced from 400 to 375. Enchant Remnant, Scepter Damage increased from 300 to 450. Scepter Radius increased from 300 to 450. So the turning someone into a stone form, hitting them with it, I think that does more damage now. Rolling, rolling Boulder Distance reduced from 800 to 750. Stone Distance reduced from 1600 to 1500. Oh, okay, so adding a stone with it. Damage increased 70 to scaling to 100 to 70 scaling to 130. With a bit earlier damage. So that's nice. I mean, a bit more damage on it. Slightly less distance. So that's that's a bit of a nerf. And with the stone, it's 100 less. So yeah, you know, slightly less uh, mobile. But his talents... Talents, uh, 50 damage at level 10, increased to 60. Level 15, 6 armor to 8. 
level 20, 16% spell amp to 18. Oh, here's one. Earthshaker, enchant totem, no longer has true strike. No longer gets consumed if the attack misses. The scepter leap range reduced from 1100 to 950. The scepter now also provides a 40% cleave with the enchant totem buff. Whoa, so Earthshaker will cleave now with the Scepter on Enchant Totem. So he can, like, dive in and cleave with that. That's pretty cool. That's crazy. Plus one armor, and then there's level 15 talent as well. Elder Titan cooldown. Earth Spirit, or Elder, like, Earth, Elder Titan's Earth Splitter cooldown. Increased from 100 to 120, scaling down to 100. So different cooldowns on Earth Spirit now. Delay from 3.15 to 2.8. So, so that's I mean, the delay on Earth Splitter is about a th three is about a third of a second faster now. So less time to escape it. Wow. So you, interesting. Uh, mana cost increased on Echo Stomp to a flat 100. Ember Spirit, some people in chats, one of their fave type heroes. Yo. Okay, Searing Chains backswing reduced from 0.87 to 0.5. So you can do casts faster after Searing Chains. Flame Guard backswing reduced. Mm -hmm. From 1 to 0 .7, 0 0.07 to 0 0.6. Duration increased on Flame Guard from 8 scaling to 20 to 11 scaling to 20. So your early game, you have 3 more seconds on Flame Guard now. Fire Remnant. Shard now provides you with a charge when killing enemy heroes rather than spawning a Fire Remnant. Except in the case where you die. What? Oh, so you get a charge of Fire Remnant. The Aghanim Shard gives you a charge for killing a hero rather than spawn... It, it did spawn a Fire Remnant on a dead hero. So you just get extra charges for killing. So, yeah, it's a Rampage... Rampage Ember Spirit coming through. Uh, cast range reduced from 1500 to 1400 on Fire Remnant. Scepter cast range reduced from 4500 to 3500. So, they nerfed the fucking shard, the Aghanims for Ember. You get, like, a thousand less cast range. But it's still pretty crazy, and, uh, Scepter's probably still good on him, just not quite as insane. Level 15 talent from 0.8 seconds Searing Chains to a full 1 second plus duration on Searing Chains. Be right back.
That's fine. Scepter is still making the same. I agree. I'm back. Enchantress. Attack speed slow increased on Untouchable. From 100 scaling to 180 to 120 scaling to 200. Nature's Attendance, Wisp Count, rescaled from 4, 6, 8, 10 to 8 at all levels. Heal per Wisp, rescaled from 7, scaling to 13 to 4, scaling to 16. Duration increased from 11 to 12. More heals. More attack speed slow. Buck Enchantress. I hope this hero doesn't come back in the meta, but she's already in the meta as a support, so they just buffed her. Enigma, cooldown on Demonic Conversion increased from 35 seconds to 50, 45, 40, 35, meaning that now he can only, he can't really deny every range creep. He will now, at level 1, only be able to get every other wave of range creep. The level 15 talent, 150 midnight pulse radius, increased to 200. Okay. Faceless, faceless void, big changes here. Base armor increased by one. Backs armor reduced on time dilation. Now does 10 to 11 DPS per cooldown. Cooldown reduced from 40 to 22 to 28 to 16. Duration reduced, cooldown slow reduced, and mana cost rescaled from 75 to 60, 70, 80, 90. Time lock damage increased from 10 scaling to 25 to 15 scaling to 30, so just more damage on time lock. Chronosphere back swing, back swing reduced from 0.7 to 3 to 0.35. Radius increased on chrono from 450 to 500 and the cast range reduced from 600 to 500 bigger chronos has to get closer to cast them still good time walk cast range reduced from 675 to 650 shard cast range increased from 200 to 400 shard return ability is now on its own hotkey Cast range reduced from point from six. I mean, yeah. The I think the increase to time lock damage is probably the biggest thing here. Like f plus five damage at level one on time lock is you get a couple procs of that. It starts adding up. Um, level ten talent, talent increased. Uh, Level 10 changed from 12 damage to 7 agility. A bit more armor, slightly less damage. Level 15 talent changed from 250 time walk cast range to 300 health. So they're reducing, like they they're they're reducing some of the movement speed stuff. Like uh, the 250 time walk cast range talent was actually really nice uh, on faceless, and so now you don't you just don't get the option for that anymore. You do get the option for more health. Level 20 talent increased from 0.175 second time walk to 0.2 minus 2 seconds time walk cooldown. So, yeah, reducing cooldowns, but re also reducing ranges. So, interesting. Grim Stroke rework shard upgrades cause Ink Swell to deal 50% more damage and heal the target for 50% of the damage Ink Swell steals. Upon expiration, the target will receive a strong dispel. So, actually, jeez, that's like a really nice item. It turns Grimstroke into part healer uh, with that and also a dispel, so that shard might be good. Phantoms embrace damage per second increased from 6 to 30 to 10 to 40. Soulbind latch radius increased from 550 to 600. Level 10 talent. Uh... Well, level 10 talent changed from ink spell cooldown to minus 6. Level 10 talent cast range replaced with 50 phantoms embrace DPS. 
So the silence can actually do more damage now. Level 10. Gyrocopter. Flak attack count increased from 2 to, to 5, scaling to 5, to 3, scaling to 6. Cooldown increased from 18 seconds to 24, scaling down to eight, 18 seconds over each level. Blink Void. I mean, eh, bl I mean, I think the thing, they didn't really nerf Swift Blink very much. I mean, I think being able to build upgrade into Swift Blink is pretty big. And you could build Blink there on him. Hoodwink! Okay, so they've added a Scepter. Grant's new active ability, Hunter's Boomerang. Tosses a boomerang in an arc at the target enemy. Upon contact, it returns to Hoodwink. The boomerang will deal 350 damage as it passes through or hits enemies, and apply a hunter's mark that causes affected enemies to be slowed 20% and take 25% more spell damage, and now and have 25% reduced status resistance for seven seconds. Cooldown 18 seconds. Mana cost 125. That's fucking absurd. Okay, that is a overloaded spell. Holy shit. 125 mana cost spell on an 18 second cool that does 350 damage to multiple enemies that slows them, makes them take more damage, and have reduced status resistance. What the fuck? <laughs> I guess you gotta build Scepter, but... Yeah. Aghanim Shard now grants a new active ability, Decoy. She has like two extra spells she can get with her eggs now, by the way. Decoy. Hoodwink sends a decoy illusion with Scurry to the target location. When the illusion is attacked or hit by a targeted ability, it is destroyed and plants a tree in its place that applies a lesser bushwhack to enemy heroes around it. The illusion lasts 12 seconds. Fucking A, man. Melee heroes can't deal with that. Fuck. Bunch of changes. Acorn shot. Bonus damage rework from 100% plus 20 scaling to 60 to 65% plus 50 scaling to 125. So actually that's just kind of buffing uh, support Hoodwink because you get less base damage mixed in with it, but more bonus damage, so you, if you're not building damage items on Hoodwink, you're just getting more damage out of that. Initial projectile now uses the attack to, attacker's projectile speed have for bounces. Planted tree is no longer considered special for tango usage, so that's nerfed. Uh, may now be placed on autocast to always use ground targeting. That's really nice, because... It was sometimes like you would accidentally click on a hero when you actually wanted to plant a tree beside them to use your W, so now you'll be able to consistently do that. Just means a bit easier to do her combo. Bushwhack radius decreased. That That's probably a good thing to do, because it's pretty big. Radius decreased from 275 to 250. Damage incre decreased from 90, scaling to 360, to 75, scaling to 300. Stun duration increased, so it's more of a stun, less damage. Stun duration increased from 1.3 to 2.2 to 1.4 scaling to 2.3. Fixed units dying during bushwhack, sometimes destroying trees and freeing other units from bushwhack. Scurry active speed reduced from 25 scaling to 40 to 20 scaling to 35. Charge replenish time reduced from 30 seconds scaling to 15 to 30 scaling to 12. So it gets more scurry as late game. Sharpshooter. Max damage. Yeah, okay. So they've nerfed a little bit of the damage. It's probably expected that this is way too much damage the max damage reduced from 600 scaling to 1400 is now 550 scaling to 1250 so she's lost 150 at level 3 now has a minimum power level of 20% and scales normally from there so actually like just doing a quick sharpshooter shot does more damage now mana cost rescaled from 150 to 125 scaling to 225 movements Speed slow reduced from 50% to 30, 40, 50. Less at early levels. Max debuff duration reduced from 6 to 5. No longer grants vision along the site. So that's good. Less, it's not as easy to blind fire it now, basically.
Okay. Are we ready for Huskar buffs? Strength gain increased from 3.2, 3.4. So, more health. Later game. Inner fire knockback duration increased from 0.6 to 0.1. Shard upgrade can now be cast while disabled. Does not remove the disable. <laughs> so, if you stun Huskar now, he can, if he has the shard, he can push you away, even if he's stunned. Seems fair. Uh, burning Spear cost reduced from 4% of current health to 3%. I'm not sure if that makes it do more damage to the enemy now than it does to him, but he used to be doing more damage to himself than the other person at level 1. Level 25 talent changed from 200 attack range to 25% spell life steal. Okay, Invoker. Anybody, uh, anybody interested in Invoker changes? Anybody? Should I skip these? Or... Uh, I don't know. Reworked Shard upgrade, anybody? <laughs> One step, skip the next, then come back. What? You sure you don't want to hear it? I thought you were incomes. You're muted, though. Rework shard upgrade causes two extra chaos meteors to land alongside the primary cast at slight angles. Reduces cooldown by 15 seconds. Quasi exhort invoker rushing shard. Just saying. Uh, Quas regen reduced f from one scaling to thirteen to one scaling to seven. Now provides plus two strength per level. Invoker does not have attribute levels. Oh, oh, dude. Okay, so they've added attribute levels back in with leveling. So, yo, dude, I said hold on. Okay, yo, hold on. I'm in the office. All right, all right, yo. Okay, so shard, tell me, is shard is shard the item still only purchasable af after 20 minutes? Yes. All right, what is the what is the shard up? Dude, shard was already busted on a boat. I already, I, what does it do now? It causes two extra. It's actually worse, I think. Uh, but it does. It causes two extra chaos meteors to land alongside the primary cast at slight angles. Cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds on on Meteor. Ooh, yo, that's not, dude, that's not horrible, man. That's not horrible. I think that's because actually the, pretty good, like. Dude, that's nutty, dude. Because the level 10 it. talent is the level 10 talent is plus 40 percent Meteor damage. Yeah. Continue, continue okay. from there, from the shard. So, <laughs> so that's that. Uh, I mean, so now Quas, uh, Quas levels the. Say, well, actually, no. Quas, the regen, you only get plus one regen now out of every Quas level. So, okay, that's fine. But you get two strength per level of Quas. Instead of one? Instead of none. You didn't get any plus, you didn't get any strength from Quas before, because they've added bonus, oh, really? they've, they've added stats into leveling again now. Uh, oh, shit! Or, or no way! There's seven. There's seven stat levels you can take. I don't know if you can take them. I think you can take them at any point in the game, actually. But Bro, but it, but Invoker. No way. But Invoker doesn't have those. He just gets. He never. He never did. He used to. No, I, I, I don't think he did. I, I'm pretty sure he used to go on the orbs because of his leveling. Yeah. So it's kind of back to that. Like so, exhort damage reduced from two scaling to twenty six to two scaling to fourteen. But he gets okay. two intelligence per level. On Exhort? Whoo! Baby! Yeah. Which is crazy for Quas Exhort and that is... Invoker. Man. And so. Quas, and... dude, they, they keep buffing Exhort and Invoker. I'm so happy right now. Yeah. Continue. Wex, <laughs> Wex now provides plus two agility per level. Oh, damn, that's me. Speed! 
Yeah. Is so more more speed, but like since Exhort is like even better now to take because the, oh, oh, dude, yeah. you were only getting. Well, actually, I think the damage is the same now because you're getting the extra intelligence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. But but it's consequently like way worse to not be taking Exhort too. It's uh the level one like laning laning stage is gonna be like Exhort won't dominate with last bit slash denies anymore. It's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be yeah it's tougher. But... Level fifteen talent increased from forty D, forty DPS ice wall to plus sixty. So yeah, I don't know. Okay, love that dude. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, that's it. They, they basically rolled the oh, stat changes in, and like they changed that. So the the old shard was being able to target the ice wall, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I I haven't been picking that up as much because the at twenty minutes it's like eh. But I've I've ran it a few times. I mean, it's really good if the other team's behind, but uh, it, if they have a lot of movement, which. You know, like if you just buy a forest, it's like okay, fuck it, I don't give a fuck anymore. But yeah, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with I'm cool with these changes, especially the the shard on meteor, dude. That's actually fucking insane. The refresher combos, whoo, mm -hmm. boy. <laughs> well, and, and and double, like, well, it's it's triple it's triple chaos meteor. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, like it's like the refresh combos on that is gonna be fucking disgusting. Yeah. With, oh my god! And with, he was—he's actually, I, I would say, also. Technically, you have way less regen. Like, at, at level at the max level of Quas, it's uh, six less age. It's six less regen per Quas. I mean that—that that was needed, man. Honestly, because at yeah. three three points at three points in Quas early in uh, early game. Which is your level six, three points in quads. You have nine before this patch. You had, I think, nineteen point eight. You had fifteen. Before yeah, there? it was five. It one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Okay, well, with okay, so yeah, so, dude, like that's it's a lot. <laughs> and it, but you have more strength. You have like more base HP now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cool with it. Per level. Yeah. Uh, to the next, sir. On to the next. All right, man. Okay, now moving on to IO. Holy oh, shit. So. Uh, level 25 attack talent now only works if IO is capable of attacking. It's not way stunned. Tether cast range reduced from 1800 to 1600. No longer unlocks max move speed shard now stuns upon connecting with the tether rather than on the tether break does not affect the same unit more than once every seven seconds spirits max distance reduced from 700 to 650 collision damage reduced from 10 scaling to 40 to 10 scaling to 25 so they kind of nerfed carry io a bit here 15 less damage per spirit uh at level four is like it's gonna be way worse uh to be it's just not it's not nearly as much damage when you start calculating and building the ags because every spirit being 15 or yeah 15 less damage that's uh it's a bit it's significant and anyway the talents seem to be just slightly rebalanced some slight changes on everything, nothing major. Jakiro, agility increased from 10 to 15. Jakiro is a fucking speedy boy now. Highly agile. Dual breath. Delay between waves reduced from 0.5 to 0.2. I didn't even realize it was a thing, really. Liquid Frost, which is his shard, now also stuns the target initially for 0.4 seconds. Shard slows reduced from 30% to 20. Macropire Scepter no longer increases damage from 100 to 180 to 125 to 220. This is a typo, I think. 
I th I don't think that this is. What? Scepter no longer increases damage from 100 to scale into 180 to 125 to scale into 220. Scepter no causes it to become pure damage and pierces spell immunity. So, pure damage back or power back. With agonims, I guess. But Rescaling of all his talents and... Oh, I see. So, the level 25 talent on Macropire uh, is now the Shard. And he has double dual breath rate damage and range as level 25 talent instead. Juggernaut. Um, Omni Lash now peer provides spell immunity. Okay. Attack rate multiplier reduced from 0.6 to 0.15. Swift Slash mana cost increased from 100 to 125. And cast reduced from 600 to 550. So, so really, they just slightly nerfed Swift Slash, and they actually buffed technically him in in Omni Lash, but they reduced the attack rate multiplier. So, slight nerfs to Juggernaut, nothing crazy, but yeah, I mean, I think the Swift Slash thing is probably the, the cast range is is something, and and the yeah, it's I I actually expected more for Juggernaut because he's been doing really well, but oh well. Hey, what the Omni Omni Lash spell immunity? What? You're already, yeah, you're Omni. Well, you're 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 not targetable in in it, but you were like, I believe it was possible like to. I think you could ice path him out of it or something. Like, there's got to be some like you're, but you're fully spell immune now in Omni Slash. I don't really know what that means though. Like, I don't know what that will change. I, I feel like that. I feel like that there was a bug. Because you've always been able to dodge spells and shit with Omni Lash, so I, I feel like there was a bug with something that was like popping them out of Omni Lash or something like that. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe. And they just made it just to make it easy. They're just like fuck it, just making fully immune. <laughs> Might, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Not I mean it makes sense good. anyway. Like, it's kind of what the idea of the spell is. Keep your light. Base strength increased. Holy shit! Tanky Keeper of the Light. Rework Shard Upgrade now grants you recall during spirit form. <laughs> We've come back. Come completely back. Like, full circle. <laughs> We've come full circle all the way back to Keeper of the Light. Having recall again during spirit form. Spirit form no longer grants recall. So your alt doesn't give you a recall anymore, but you need ags to do it. Now it causes Illuminate to heal for 30, 40, 50% of its damage. So you can heal with Illuminate. Well, okay. Changes to the talents. Uh, level 15 talent, two solar bind charges. That's interesting. The rest of the stuff. Eh. Level 20 talent from minus four second Chakra Magic cooldown to Chakra Magic Dispels. That's actually... Yeah, I could see I could see games where you'd want to take that if you get to level twenty on Keeper of the Light. Uh, Kunkka base HP regen increased from 0.25 to 0.75. Agility gain increased from 0.13 to 0.6, 1.6. So, yeah, so plus 0.3 agility gain, so a bit more armor. Attack speed late game, kind of cool. Torrent cast range reduced from 1500 to. 1300, still pretty far. Tidal Wave Shard now causes affected units to be unable to attack for the pull duration. Shard now starts 900 units behind you instead of 600, so way further behind you. Shard cooldown reduced from 14 to 12 seconds, and the shard damage increased from 225 to 250. Okay. Uh... Level 10 talent changed from 150 cast range to 0.4 seconds torrent knock up and stun duration. Level 15 talent 
plus 8 he health regen to plus 14 strength. 20 talent from 20 strength to 70% tiebringer cleave. And the 25 talent, instead of 140% tiebringer cleave, is now minus 2 second tiebringer cooldown. So that's, yeah, luring the cooldowner. Like, potentially being able to skill into the cleave build where you're just like, get increased tiebringer cleave earlier and then like reduction you could tiebringer like every two seconds i think it's pretty pretty good legion commander rework shard causes press the attack to apply spell immunity per for 0.75 seconds reduces cooldown by three seconds overwhelming our our odds radius increased 330 and it scales now to 360. Dual Scepter no longer grants spell immunity. Scepter damage immunity from non dual participants changed from 100% to 50%. Scepter reduced cooldown by 20 seconds. Weird. Uh, that, 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 this, this Scepter is even weirder now. Uh, level 15 talent changed from nine, minus 9 seconds overwhelming odds cooldown to. 75 overwhelming odds damage per hero. That's pretty good. Lashrac nerfs. Cast point reduced on Lightning Storm from 0.4 to 0.3. Pulse Nova radius increased from 475 to 525. Split Earth Shard pulse count increased from 2 to 3. Changes to talents. Not too interesting. Lich. Frost Blast. Mana cost reduced from 115 scale to 190 to 115 scale to 175. Primary target damage reduced 50 to 200 to 40, 260. So Frost Blast, yeah, just generally getting less damage early game. It's like 10 less damage per cast, and I think they've already been... The mana cost is the same early game, so you're just getting less damage out of Frost Blast now. I think, the ch I think the Ice Armor will probably be the better build. Area damage increased from 75... Scaling to 150 to 80, scaling to 200. Chain Frost mana cost increased from 200 to scaling to 500, from 200 scaling to 500. Okay, so the level 2 costs 25 per more mana on Chain Frost. Neato. Ice Spire, the shard, health increased from 600 to 800, shard radius increased from 600 to 6, 750, shard slow increased from 200 to 30. Shard on Lich is actually really good. I've, I've played against a Lich to build it, and it's fucking annoying to deal with, especially when you're trying to go high ground, and they can just put a shard in the middle of the lane and slows everybody. But you can kill it. Uh, slight changes to the talents. Uh, level 10 talent changed from 100% or 100 cast range to 10% frost shield damage reduction. Okay. Life Stealer, base damage reduced by three. He doesn't have any base damage to be reduced. What are you what are you doing, Valve? He doesn't have any. He has zero base damage. Life Stealer tickles you to death. What the fuck? Okay. Well, Life Stealer nerfed. Feast now does 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1.2 percent of the target's max health as damage. Okay, so I guess he gets more hero damage now. So can't get CS. GG Life Stealer. Uh, sh open Wounds. Shard now also causes all hero attacks on the target to deal 2% of the target's max health as damage. So that's actually pretty good for the sh if you're going to build Aghanim Shard on him. Shard cooldown re reduced from 25 to 15. Infest Scepter Hero Duration increased from 4 to 5. Scepter cooldown reduced from 25 to 20. Okay. Bunch of random changes. I can't... Uh, that's... Uh, Maybe with the feast and open wounds changes, that was maybe that's actually a buff. But losing base damage on life so feels terrible. That hero has really low base damage already. So Lena, light strike array damage increased from 80 scaling to 200 to 80 scaling to 230. Laguna braid shard now removes the delay before damage is dealt. Shard cast range bonus increased 150 to 250. Talents. 75 cast range, down to minus 2 second dragon slave cooldown. Nothing too interesting. Okay, Lion, shard upgrade reworked. Causes mana drain to affect up to 3 enemies. You become spell immune while channeling. Lion has a spell immunity shard. Fuck. And he drains your mana while doing it. That's nuts. 
manager in, cooldown rescaled from 16 to f scaling down to 4 seconds to 15, scaling to 6 seconds. So, 2 second longer cooldown at level 4. Okay, break distance reduced from 1200 to 1100. That's nice, so you can walk away from Lion when he's stuck in your mana. The... Let's see here. Remove the manager of slow talent, replace it with movement speed. Uh, level 15 cast range talent replaced with s plus 70 max health per finger on death kill. So he can now actually get more health when he gets kills too. Way wild. Level 20 talent changed from two mana drain multi target to mana drain restores allies. So you can restore mana to your fucking allies with lion now at level 20 that's crazy lone druid short changes here ranged base attack time improved from 1.7 to 1.6 savage roar shard now also applies a basic dispel on you and the bear Shard now also causes the roar to happen on both locations, regardless of the casting state on the other side. It's back! <laughs> the brokenness is back, starting at 20 minutes. Build that every All game. Alright, dude. Time to start spamming again. Yeah, I'm saying that that is broken, and that just means that I think you earmark 1,400 gold for 20 minutes to buy that shard every game. A free dispel and a free roar from your bear. Pretty good. Luna. Cast range. Eclipse cast point reduced by point one. Lucent beam. Shard no longer increases stun duration. Shard no longer provides you with movement speed. Shard now releases an attack at up to two random targets within a 500 ra radius of the target location. These attacks bounce like glaives normally do. Lowers mana cost by 50. Wow, that's actually a pretty good shard. Holy shit. Uh, level 10 talent from 350 cast range to 0.4 second Lucent Beam Stun. So she's lost the cast beam, the cast range talent. Luna support may be less of a thing as a consequence. Lycan, agility gain increased from 1 to 1.4. Attack backswing reduced from 0.55 to 0.25. That's actually quite nice on Lycan. His attacks are kind of clunky. They feel pretty slow. So, buffing his right click. More armor late game. Summon Wolves, mana cost reduced from 145 to 125, scaling to 140. Feral Impulse. Bonus damage increased from 12 to scaling to 42 to 12 scaling to 48. Shapeshift transformation time reduced from 1.25 to 1.1. Movement scale reduced from 650 to 550. So slower shapeshift. Duration increased from 22 to 28. Now increases Lycan's health by 150 to 5350. Wolf Bite now grants shapeshift to the target only rather than the target and the units it controls. It can now target creep heroes, units like Spirit Bear and Golem. So that's the shard. Wait a minute. Lycan can use the shard and give Spirit Bear wolf form.
that's broken. That's, that's broken as fuck. Uh, okay. Magnus. Damage increased from 11... Scaling to 32. So more in power damage finally on Magnus. I guess they feel like people have forgotten about support Magnus, so... Why not buff in power again? Uh, Shockwave. Mana cost reduced... From 90 scaling 120 to 80 scaling 110. Mana cost damage change. McDonald's. Skewer damage increased at later levels. Speed reduced from 950 to 900. Mana cost reduction on reverse polarity. Shard, horn toss shard landing stun duration increased. 0.25 to 0.75. Changes to talents, nothing too interesting. Mars, intelligence gain increased from 1.6 to 2.2, .2. agility gain reduced from 1.9 to 1.7, so less armor, more mana. God's rebuke damage versus heroes reduced from 35% to 20, scaling to 35%. Bulwark, scepter attack slow increased from 20% to 30%. Oh yeah, that's a, that scepter is actually pretty good on Mars. Increase, I forget exactly what that does. Arena of Blood, damage reduced 100, scaling down to 250, 200 to 220. So slightly less damage on level at level 3 ultimate on Mars. Uh, very slight changes to the talents. That one, level 25 talent seems kind of interesting. 180 HP regen in Arena. Medusa base HP regen increased from 0 to 0.25. Intelligence gain reduced from 4 to 3.6. Mana shield now passively provides 100, scaling to 250 mana. Mystic snake scepter stone duration rescaled from 1 plus 0.3 per bounce to 1.5 plus 0.2 per bounce. So more base stun duration from the uh, scepter snakes. Meepo. Collision size reduced from 24 to 8. On Meepo. That's a weird change. I don't think I've ever seen them change that. Rework shard now allows you to poof to allies within a max range of 2,000 when directly targeting them. So you can just teleport to enemies to thousand distance away on Meepo with the shard. Wow. Okay, poof. Radius increased from 375 to 400. Damage reduced from 70 scaling to 130 to 60 scaling to 120. Dig. The scepter duration increased from 3.5 to 4. Scepter health restore increased from 25% to 40%. Uh, changes to the talents. Nothing too significant. Monkey King, base health regen reduced from 1.5 to 1. Wukong's command soldier fixed to no longer ignore their attack cooldown when they miss. Tree Dance, ground to tree range reduced from 100 to 900. Boundless Strike cast range reduced from 1200 to 1100. Wukong's command scepter soldiers no longer attack Roshan. Scepter soldiers now die when Monkey King dies. Nice! That's fair. I think that's fair. The Scepter no longer attacking Roshan, that's pretty big. That's a big reason that people were actually rushing it on Monkey King uh, when they knew what they were doing, because you could then Roshan actually for free with it. You you could just the you could just let that since they weren't you, your illusions could just actually clear Roshan without you taking any damage. Um, okay, talent changes. Um, they've removed the Primal Spring Damage talent, which allowed you to push waves really quickly, replace it with the uh, cooldown. Uh, level 25 talent changed from 200 armor in Wukong's command to zero cooldown Primal Spring. So, so he can just jump out of trees in a zero second cooldown at level 25. That's pretty cool. Uh, here's a... Uh, a newer hero that they added to the game. Uh, kind of boring. Morphling? Morphling changes. 
lots of changes. Intelligence increased from 15 to 1 plus 1 1.5 per level to 19 plus 1.8 per level. So just overall more mana on Morphling. Nice. Attribute shift now has a 10. Oh. Oh. Attribute shift now has 10 mana cost per second to shift attributes. Attribute shift interval rescaled from 1 4 10 25 to 3 6 okay. 12 24. That's actually attribute shift used to cost mana as well. I was at, I was actually thinking about this the other day with attribute shift. Yeah. Costing mana again and I mean uh, yeah. <laughs> that makes... Yeah. I mean, okay. it'll, it'll, uh, it means a diffusal. I mean, look, like, diffusal is already an answer to Morphling, right? Because, like, if you could get rid of Morphling's mana, he doesn't do much. He doesn't have an escape, yeah. But so... The, so, like, the, the thing with it is what that... So that doesn't really nerf him all that much. What that nerfs him in the laning stage whenever... You sit, you're sitting at all agi, and then they start beating on you, and you slowly shift your strength. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like when, whenever you have good control of your your attribute shift, that's what it nerfs. Other than that, um, I think it's still, I think it's still fine. Well, they buffed attribute shift. The the interval is rescaled. So well, what is what's the what is it? That's now? like how much you were shifting. So it's, Correct, yeah. it was 1, 4, 10, 25 before, it's now 3, 6, 12, 24, so the, you just... Wow, okay. Yeah, like, you're just shy of what was your level 2 on Attribute Shift is now your level 1, you're just shy of that. Uh, yeah, okay. That's Yo, that's so actually that? kind of a buff, level 1, like, more things can be stronger, really. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, no, yeah, we'll hit... He's nerfing the fact where he just he needs more mana to be able to, to do the adaptive to be able to choose his health. Adaptive strike mana cost reduced from eighty to fifty, scaling to eighty. Adaptive strike shard no longer removes the three second shard cooldown. The adaptive strike shard increases stun duration by one second. Dude, I've always wondered about support morphling and that shard. Makes me think. I've been thinking about that too. Dude, I was thinking about support morph the other day too, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sit on strength. And so they've reduced the mana costs. Uh, also, waveform mana cost uh, reduced from 150 scaling to 165 to just a flat 140. Wait, one more time? So the waveform mana cost is r reduced from 150 scaling to 165 to a flat 140. Okay, so it's back to what it actually. Is that, is that, that's it's what just it, it used to be. Lower in general, yeah. I mean, they've reduced some of the cost of your spells at the cost of like an attribute shift costing per second. Yeah, I think I think Morph is still fine. Especially it now. Probably he's is. Really, he's really, yeah, I think it's fine, dude. They've just changed things. I mean, I think it's. I think what is interesting about this is they're they're just adding like. You can't just attribute for attribute shift for absolute free now, you know. Like, I think it's okay to at least have it cost mana. Like, so if you're just having to constantly attribute shift, like, you're probably gonna be not be able to cast as much. Like, it's balanced, right? Like, yeah, I don't know. that's I, what I'm saying. Like, attribute shift used to cost mana, and I mean, I'm I'm cool. He was strong then; he'll be strong now. Yep. I think it actually used to cost ten as well. To be honest with you. It might also um, sort of make sense to do the like Lincoln's build more on Morphling too. That's that's what that's what I was gonna say. It's, I don't think I don't think you're rushing E Blade anymore. I think it's you're going you're going Lincoln's again because that that's what you used to go as well. You used to go Lincoln's first for the mana region. You could probably so. still just at least get the Void Stone or something to help with your mana. Like I think yeah. I think just dealing with your mana is gonna be more important than ever on Morphling. I'm all but it, dude. This is cool. the I think the actual the mana cost reduction you're paying 25 less mana for waveform now at level four like that's that's just flat good for late game morphling 
Uh, the mana, yeah, hey, the mana, the adaptive strike cost is early game better too. It's cheaper early game is like, but it's the same as it was late game. So. Yeah, his skill leveling is totally gonna be different now as well. Like I, I don't, I really don't think you're maxing attribute shifts anymore. I think you're putting like two, two maybe three points, and then you're focusing on your Q and W. For, the, for like more early game, I don't know. Could be wrong, but I mean that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah, no, for Maybe sure. Maybe one one point one point in Q and then adaptive strike attribute shift is I think the move. But I think yeah, I hey. think you'll probably want to level up adaptive strike just because it just will do more damage. You you have the equivalent of level two. I don't know, hard to say. I don't know enough about morphing, but it's definitely interesting. I think. Uh, the, the agility, the, the talent changes too are kind of interesting. He doesn't get level 10 talent agility. He now gets option for 15% 15, 15 magic resist or 250 waveform range. Okay. At level I, 15. The range. At level 15, instead of attack speed, he now gets the option for 15 agility. Okay. Nobody ever took the attack speed either. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, I think the 15 ID. Level 20 talent changed from 12% cooldown reduction to 20 strength. Okay. So that that's what I would take at 20. Is yeah. The cool that, it's so the that cool cool CDR, down. yeah, they changed a bunch of the cooldown reduction things though too. Uh, level 25 talent changed from 30 strength to attribute shift while stunned. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why though? Do you, Fuck. No, Shadow, listen. <laughs> Do you know that last that last game I played last night? Yeah. The fucking the guy I was morph, right? The guy said morph. He told told me to morph strength while I was getting eaten by Pudge, and yeah. I word for word what I told him was tell me what tell me when the update comes out when I can morph while stunned. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck, dude. That's funny. Uh, well, can you hear me, hello? Yeah, I can hear you. You changed mics or something? Oh, I think my shit fucked up. Sounds. Alright. So, are you there? I think, I, I, think, I think my shit fucked up. But also, also, what I was gonna say is that I think Kaya. Kaya is gonna be busted on Morph. Yeah. What were you gonna say? Kaya might be busted on Morph, actually. Well, you could, because yeah, you can go I Yasha Kaya. Exactly, yeah. Uh, that's just, I mean, I just feel like that's, at least it's late game. I mean, it means that, like, at level 25, you fucking have to be able to actually kill Morphling. It's gonna be all about yeah. mana drain. Like, it'll did be. You, did... Yeah. Yes, it is. You, the did the you, absolute you know what answer. I, what will be mana but About the the guy told me to morph or to actually yeah, no, while I was stunned. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, yo, yo, dude, shadow. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, oh, level twenty-five morphling officially broken. Anyway, moving yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, it's carry on too. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I appreciate the input from a uh, proper morph player. Naga Siren. I played a little bit of this hero in snare cooldown i personally think that naga siren might be a support actually uh the only thing is the problem with her she's not, maybe not she's not a, she's not a support in real games she might be a support in pubs because her agonims is now the old net that pierces spell immunity and it's w with a crazy increased range so anyway in snare cooldown increased from 14 to 20 second for flat 14 to 23 scaling down to 14 duration increased from two seconds Spring's scaling to five. Which means we have tons of deals at Lowe's. Spring. Lowe's. Uh, duration increase from two scaling to five to 2.7 scaling to five. So better at level one. I think people are ignoring this talent. Usually when you play carry Naga, you don't level net at all until like level eight or nine. Uh, Cast range reduced from 650 to 575, scaling to 650. Scepter cooldown reduced from 
or set for cooldown reduction increase from minus five to minus six. So yeah, Scepter even better. <laughs> uh, the cast range is the same late game, it's just early game it isn't. I mean, I think they're actually potentially going like, hey, it's funny that they're nerfing in Snare early game, because maybe that was really good, but I mean, they're well, they're actually not nerfing it, they're buffing the duration of in Snare right now. Just, but they increase the cooldown of it, so. Uh, again, kind of making it look more like a support item or a support spell you know you have a almost three second stun or well root at level one <laughs> like <laughs> that's pretty good like it's, it's like two two point seven five seconds is an eternity in the laning stage you just take this take and snare level one and you're like off to the races playing naga support here uh rushing eggs though is the big problem riptide shard no longer has an active Shard armor reduction increased to minus two to minus four. Shard no adds twenty percent slow when it procs. Eh, okay, removing the active is a bit, a bit kind of sucks. I mean, be, building like the shard on Nago is basically letting you like farm like old Nago, where you could just like park an illusion in like three camps and then use it, use your Riptide and like clear them all. So, uh. Yeah, I have to see how that plays out. Naga, I think Naga might be a support, personally. Calling it now. Uh, oh, here we go too. Yeah, Realm. Realm would be the guy that. Realm's a huge Naga player. Actually. Yeah. He he would be the guy to ask. But he's oh, not going to think he's 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 not going to think she's a support because I'm going to be like. He might. Like, no, he might. He, he might. Yeah. I mean, I just think that like. They just put almost a full second on the duration of ensnare, and then increase yeah, and, and and increase the duration. Or well, they increase the cooldown nine seconds, but like they reduce the like it's it just as a design of ensnare. Now I'm like that's a like dude anybody that just like if you have any kill threat like if you, like, like picture like Naga with like Ursa or something in lane against. I mean, I, I could see that as a four man. Yeah. Honestly, a roaming four into mid. <laughs> Yeah, that that maybe gets a bit of farm because I think like if you build the eggs, it's just like it, you can't even BKB through it. Like there's nothing. <laughs> like it's actually just good yeah, lockdown. Pretty... And if you built like yeah, I don't know, maybe like if you built something super weird like like Aether into fucking eggs or something. Like I don't know. You don't even need the Aether. Like 650 cast range is still pretty far. Anyway. Anyway, the level 25 talent changed from 25% evasion to minus 10 second mirror image, image cooldown. I think that's just strictly better because you're like you can get evasion on Naga by getting like butterfly or like a couple other items. M having mirror image on a minus 10 second cooldowns is pretty strong. Like here, I'll fire. I'm gonna fire up the client here. Um, yeah, Naga, still a hero, definitely. Um, Nature's Prophet. Nature's Call attack damage rescaled from 22 to scaling to 35 to 18 scaling to 36. So, wow, nerfing early trees again. Damage, like, that's minus 4 damage at level 1 trees. So, deforestation continues to be a threat, um, and two at level two less at level two. But then after that, it's the same. So, just basically nerfing early game trees for the first two level of trees. Like you're probably just even more so wanting to just rush trees, uh, and better at level four actually. More damage, more damage late game. So. Um, Dun, dun, dun. Darkness fears the break of dawn. 
Dawnbreaker. Okay, here's Dawnbreaker. Let's demo the hero. Holy fuck, bro. Okay, so this new hero, by the way, has Galio's ult. Hey. Yeah, I, I saw that. I can't. I, I think she's gonna be really good to go. Um. Or mid, even. Honestly. Uh, was, was that all the. Uh, hero? Tactic? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, don't. No, I was. Be, be okay. I just wanted to check this out real quick. No, I don't blame you. Uh, dude, this. Okay, this Dawnbringer hero, Dawnbreaker hero, want to play this as a core, <laughs> like hardcore. I think she can just escape from anything, dude. Like you can just TP to your like if you ever like. There's nothing stopping Dawnbreaker from building like Battle Fury. And like being able to just like push out any fucking wave, and if anyone goes on her, she just like fucking yolos out of there to a teammate. Her ult is on a hundred and twenty second cooldown. <laughs> like, you know, man. I stand empowered by the light. Yeah, sounds like a pretty solid tempo mid TB8. Is she a strength hero? Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> They they have her as melee carry and durable. Yeah. She doesn't have eggs yet though. Eleven hundred cast range on her hammer. What, <laughs> dude? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> like, uh, I gotta level her to max for a second here. What is this cast range? Holy. Let's put the axe here. I'll keep reading through the patch notes here in a second. I'm just uh, wanting to try a combo here. No, you're fine, man. I'm, I'm, you're good. You're... Yeah, you can just pick plus two to all attributes. <laughs> Again. You can do it seven times in a game. Are you... That's... Yeah, dude, I told you this patch, it was, like, honestly, the, the map and everything, right? even that attribute change again, that, um, it, this is, like, blast is six years ago, eight years ago, dude. Like, it is, uh, it is old Dota. We've gone full circle again, man, just with better shit. <laughs> so I'm all for it. Yeah. How do you create... Create right, spawn. Dude. I forget how to do the cheats in Dota. Kill, refresh, level up. Your middle tower is defending itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it right now. I was doing I am in demo. I was just doing I was doing it earlier. What the hell? Create hero. Just 
so. Axer bars. There we go. Okay. Wanting to do this. Dun, 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 dun. Dude, this Dawnbreaker is insane. <laughs> I don't. Even, that hero is gonna be some shit, man. I'm telling you. This this is a. Uh, Dawnbringer Mars, man. Think about it. Anyway. Here's our login screen. Okay. Back to the Chrome cap. So, <laughs> okay. They nerfed Profit. <laughs> Added Dawnbringer to the game. Nerf Profit. Teleportation cooldown. Increased at level 1 from 50 to 65, scaling to the same at 20. Wrath of Nature base damage increased from 110 to 70 to 115 to 185. I'll just read what they are increased to. Increment per bounce reduced 11% to 10%. Okay, so that should overall be just slightly a nerf to Wrath of Nature. Wrath of Nature can be pretty insane, especially with the Agonims and the root and the shard now, it's just it's a lot. The scepter of root duration increased though from 1.6. <laughs> One point six to three point four to two to three point eight. So they increased the root on the scepter. Well, uh, talent changes, nothing too major. Necrophos attack animation time reduced from point four to point three. Attack projectile speed increased from nine hundred to twelve hundred. So that's kind of nice for Necro. Char has been re reworked. No longer does fifty percent more mad damage and heal. Instead, it applies to Crepify to the target enemy or ally for two point five seconds. Against enemies, it m reduces magic resistance by 25%. Um, Pugna Necro combo. Does that, would that stack decrep with that? Would that be like an extra fucking 60% magic damage taken? I need, I need, um, I need to know. If you want to tune into the stream, I'll test that right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, I am driving. But okay, you, don't you do that. And don't tune into the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Keep driving safely. Arrive home at your destination. I'll, I'm going to look at this right now. Shard. Prepare for battle. Okay. Uh, we got a Pugna here. Because if that does stack, like just for, you know, somebody that builds E Blade, all right, more. If you throw those two, even fucking one of them, honestly, but if you put two, uh, and they stack, and you fucking E Blade as more into a dude, <laughs> that one shot anything, <laughs> get out of. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, there's a shard here. Item is not allowed on this hero. Oh, can I... Time. How do I... Time. Time. You can't actually test the shard for some reason. Uh, you, you oh, that's weird. Mm. Uh, oh, you, you might be able to do the command to add the shard to Necro or whatever the fuck without having yeah. to buy it. Yeah, uh, how do you 
do it again. Give item. Yeah, item. Item. Agonyms. Shard. How do we spell it? Oops. Right? Am I doing right? Yeah. Ah. Well, what the fuck? How do I... You're doing... Uh, necropho dash necropho space give item and then agonim shard, right? Yeah, it's just I don't even know if agonim shard has a command. Uh -oh. Dota to agonim shard test. Maybe this is a bug or something, because <laughs> it says this is supposed to be doable. Yeah, it might be a bug. Oh well, it's odd. It's odd, dude. Test it. Test it in a game. Test it in a game. That's what I'm gonna do? Uh, weird. Okay. Uh, unfortunate. For now, I we're gonna have to chill. Should we do? We're gonna keep reading these pap notches. <laughs> uh, patch notes. Back to Necrophos. That's that is potentially crazy. Like the fact that he can target an enemy or an ally with decrepify. That's <laughs> uh, that's uh yeah. That's very. He can decrepify an enemy with that and then use his alt on them. Like, he doesn't even need bug now. <laughs> like, if it stacks, that's going to be crazy, but... Yeah, dude, yeah. It's all about that. I mean, yeah, it no, that reduces, shard, it, it, The shard itself reduces their magic resistance by 25% as well. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was saying, man. And then, that, if yeah. it does second Pugna, holy fuck. <laughs> Ghost, but, dude, I mean, like, he literally, he literally turns into Pugna with that shard, though. Yeah. <laughs> this is some buffs to Necropos. They slow increased on Ghost Shroud from 6 at level 1 to 12. Scaling to the same at 24. Heartstopper Aura regen increased from 3.5 to 4, 5, 6, 7. Per level regen duration increased from 7 to 8. Cast point on Reaper Scythe reduced from 0.55 to 0.45. So Necrophos, fucking potentially just crazy hero right now. That shard is nuts. Uh, being able to just buy that at like 20 minutes and then just like kill anyone with your ult in that is just like, I don't know. Yeah, E Blade Necro, baby. <laughs> yep. Night Stalker, Hunter in the Night. Shard is no longer restricted from player units, cannot affect special units like golems or spirit bears. Shard can now be cast during the day on non-ancient units. Shard can shard healing increase from twenty-five to thirty-five. So hold on. Night Stalker. Okay. The shard causes Hunter in the Night can cast Hunter in the Night, consume a creep, instantly killing it and restoring 35% of Night Sucker's maximum HP and 25% maximum mana. That shard is actually nuts. You can cast his, his passive and just eat stuff. And that has been buffed. Um, so, 
and he can the shard is no longer restricted from player units cannot affect special units like golems or spirit bears what are player units <laughs> hold on Wait, 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 you're it doesn't affect what? Player units? Player units. Oh, yeah, so like, hold on. So, it's, it's Eidolons, oh, Forge Spirits, Treants, Summons, yeah. Necronomicon, rest in peace. Okay. Uh, that shard seems cool. Other than that, some talent changes. Uh, Vendetta now, presi now provides 50% attack speed and animation speed. Crazy. So on that attack that you come out of Vendetta, Vendetta is going to be very fast now. That's a uh, super fuck you enchantress is what that is. Yeah. Hard counter. Hard enchantress counter now. True. Even more so than in the past. Well, that's cool. When you click on the hero, it now links right to their character sheet. Cool. Okay. Level 20 talent reduced from 140 impale damage to 130. Level 20 talent changed from 75% spark carapace damage to minus 3.5 spiked carapace cooldown. So, okay. Whatever. Like, uh... Nyx is still a good hero. I mean, like, this is just sort of... It seems like they're... Inc like, buffing Nyx, actually. I mean, basically, the, the, Ag is, the Ag's is even better. Uh, his talent's slightly reworked. Uh, Ogre Magi, what, Fire Shield... What is the Ag? Well, the Agonims is the one thing that lets him burrow, right? And no, yeah, yeah. Well, what the scep they, the what scepter, the scepter damage reduction increased from 40% to 50%. Oh, wow, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, level 20 talent, 140 impale damage down to 130. And instead of a level 20, 75% spike carapace damage, you're not getting spike carapace cooldown. So that's, you're going to have carapace more often, which is a level 20 potentially. Uh, or, or more damage on impale. So two spells, which you get the choice to improve between them. Like, that's great. I think uh, Nick's definitely still a hero. Potentially even better versus stuff like Enchantress, or I mean, just quality of life improvement for coming out of Vendetta as well and getting that hit off. Ogre Magi Fire Shield Shard incoming damage reduction increase from 70% to 85%. Shard mana cost reduction from 75 to 50. So that's cool. I mean, the Fire Shield uh, on Ogre Magi, I've built it. It uh, feels like it gets popped really easily. Doesn't actually absorb. Ton, that much damage b before it goes away so reducing damage is good to have like while it's active so that seems like a cool cool change um, ignite cast point reduced bloodlust mana cost reduced uh, from flat 65 to, fi to 50 wow so bloodlust even cheaper early that's pretty nice uh, talents change, doesn't have cast range, minus one second. Yeah, so most of the cast range talents, by the way, have been removed. And now, uh, this is my, f uh, more fire blast cooldown. Uh, bloodless attack speed reduced, level 20, no big deal, talents changes. Omni Knight base strength increased by two, base movement speed increased by th five. Heavenly Grace strength bonus increased by one. One scaling up to four per level. Uh, well, six, eight to thirty-two. Hammer of Purity, which is I think the Agnum Shard, damage rescaled from fifty plus one hundred fifty percent to sixty plus one hundred fifteen percent of attack damage. I'm assuming, I'm assuming that means cooldown reduced from six to four. Meta cost reduced from thirty to twenty. Cool. Uh, change on base damage. Carry Omni Knight might be a thing. Like he just got base strength increase, movement spend, movement speed increase, and f uh, at level ten plus ten to his base damage talent. So 
like Carrie Omni could very well be like a serious counter to a lot of the stuff which is in the game now. I mean, I'm thinking specific, specifically about that Dawnbreaker hero. Like, it, we'll see how that hero turns out. But I mean, she's like Omniite seems like one hero which might be able to help deal with a lot of these like combos, like <clears throat> Mars into like Dawnbringer. Yeah. Well, for a, a patch or two, Terry Omni was kind of a thing, actually. Oh yeah, and, it is a thing, and it makes it's... me makes me sad that that's all coming back now. <laughs> Because it's it can be rough. He builds like radiance or something like Midas, like Midas into like radiance or like maybe even fuck the Midas. Like I don't know. He's a he's a good hero, man. Like he doesn't function like I. There are not very many strength. Like there's a lack of like strength heroes in the game. There's a lack of like melee strength heroes. Not melee strength heroes. Uh, there's a lack of like. It's. I think it's. Um, here, I have this in Dota. I'll bring up my. I'll bring up heroes. So here we go. Transition. So like, there's. There's only four range strength heroes in the game. There's only three intelligence melee heroes in the game. And uh, they actually, they just added Dawnbringer. So now she's strength melee. And, but in terms of like carries though, in strength, like there's there's Sven and like Wraith King and like CK, <laughs> the Alchemist, I guess, sort of, and like used to be, and like and I guess there's uh, Lycan. So anyway, there's just not that many like strength. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's it's typical like, typically it's like Agi carries or like or like the main melee carries and stuff but like anyway it's i just think, think it's cool that they've added like another melee like potential strength carry but like she is her kit is loaded as fuck for like a for a melee hero she is stun and like long range initiate and like a global how does this work i was gonna see can you stun her out of this I want to see this. I'm going to test this for a second. Not many things Hello. Can make me safe, Enemy. Axe is fine. So if I go... So if I go, so it, yeah, you get taunted out of it. Okay. But that pierces spell immunity. What about stuns? BKB. What if I have BKB and I channel my ult and a Wraith King walks up and stuns me? What then? Probably nothing, right? What about... The stun will actually follow you, by the way. <laughs> So it's like one it's channeled spell. Yeah. It's it is channeled. So you could potentially like be yeah. 
still strong. Still highly strong. I'm the beast of bedtime tales. So, Omni anyway. Omni carry might be a thing. Oracle, intelligence gain reduced from 4 to 3.8. Fortune's End damage is rescaled from 120 to 210 to 100 to 280. So, like 20 less damage on your Fortune's End. That's a bit significant. It's part of your damage combo, really. So, every little bit of like base damage kind of sucks when you're a support. Uh, talent changes, less... Remo removing the cast range uh, in place of 15 armor false promise. It's kind of cool. Minus fort one of us, 1.5 seconds fortune's end, max channel time to instant fortune's end. Wow. At level 25, instant fortune's end, max. So just instant max duration fortune's ends at level 25 is pretty cool. Oracle carry, perhaps. Uh, yeah, interesting changes here. Uh, OD, let's see what happens to fucking OD, because this hero, like, is broken. No one likes him. Go home. Shard now has 0 0.75 second cast time instead of a 1.5 second channel. For essence time. For essence, essence flux, now the shard... With, which is the shard that has a cast time rather than a channel. Which is actually kind of a buff, I guess, to the shard. Shard now transfers 100% of the health and mana instead of 75%. Oh, but that... Wasn't that, like, you're flipping your your mana with your HP? Like, I guess potentially that could be good if you have, like, Satanic or something. But, like, what? Anyway. Astral Imprisonment cast point increased from 0.25 to 0.3. So, longer cast point on Astral Imprisonment. Scepter no longer increases cast range by 150. Scepter now also increases damage by 140. Scepter now also causes it to do damage in a 400 AoE. Which is like how old Astral Imprisonment was work, worked. So, interesting. Uh, I would have uh, expected a little bit more change to OD, but um, he's currently like fairly strong hero and it seems like they didn't really change much to do with Astral um, other than increase its cast point. So OD still a thing. I guess willing to chill on that. There were slight nerfs to the stun duration of Meteor Hammer but uh, my combo is still going to be a thing so there was, wasn't major changes to the recipe of, her any, of Meteor Hammer or anything so the build up will still be good. Pangalier, one of my favorite heroes. Cast range reduced on Swash from 900 to 850. So, that sucks. I mean, that's your main spell. So, I would argue that's like your, when you're, <laughs> your main, maybe your main spell other than your ult. Uh, so, slightly less cast range is, is not great, but I mean, it's it's an amazing tool overall. So, it slight nerf to it. I mean, I guess he's still getting played a lot. So, Panglier has been steadily kind of getting nerfed since he was re released. So... Rolling, rolling Thunder, speed reduced from 600 to 550. So actually, yeah, I mean, like, Rolling Thunder is fast, but uh, the duration increased from 8 to 10 seconds, so it's a longer duration, which is nice, but slightly slower. Damage reduced. This is the, this is a change I've been waiting to, for, to see for a long time, or just expecting. Uh, I, <laughs> the damage is being reduced from 200 to 3, scaling to 350 to 180 to 340, so t you're losing 20 damage, scaling to 10 damage at level 4 on his ult. It just does a lot of damage. Like, you know, at level at level 3, Pangleader's ult is doing 340 damage now every time it hits you. Like, th that's actually like a decent spell every time. So, if you're hitting the entire team with that, that multiplies really quickly. So, slight nerf to that. Um, I think that's been one of the underrated parts of Pango, is just how much damage his ult actually does. Uh, anyway, shield crash, mana cost reduced from 80 scaling to 110 to 60 scaling to 90. That's 
quite nice. Most builds are skipping shield crash on Pang shield crash on Pango right now, so uh, reducing the mana cost of it. Damage the damage reduction increased also from nine scaling to eighteen per, to twelve scaling to eighteen. So you're getting three percent more damage reduction for twenty less mana at level one for for shield crash. That might actually start making it worth taking because. You're just so wanting to just focus on Swashbuckle, I think, that usually you're just taking the passive and Swash. But that could be a value point for sure. Uh, Phantom Assassin. Stifling Dagger. Most engaging spell in the game, by the way. Range rescaled from 525 scaling to 1200 to 550 scaling to 1150. So... 50 cast range off of level 4 and 25 extra at level 1. So that's, I mean, very minor in a lot of ways, but the cast range of Siphoning Dagger being a very important feature of Phantom Assassin. That's slight b buff to her early game, but um, late game and, you know, the 50 cast range could be the meaning, could be the difference between not catching someone or... So, uh, the Phantom Knives, Knives Shard, which is super good, I think, is actually appearing to get buffed. The shard damage increased from 12% to 16%, which is like, uh, I think it's of your base damage. And the shard mana cost reduced from 125 to 50. <laughs> so even cheaper on mana, which was like, I would, I, from where I looked at it from playing PA, like if building the shard, the one downside to it is that 125 mana is actually quite a bit on PA. Uh, Phantom Knives has break though, so this spell is, is very good. Um, now I wonder if they've changed this. It says 16% on this, and it has increased here. It is it's updated already. I have a feeling this is all hypertext. Anyway, uh, talents. Let's see. Shard impact time now also matches the projectile's visual. Cool. Siphoning dagger cooldown increased on the talent. Level 20 and minus 50 phantom strike cast range. This is the main talent that most phantom assassins were, uh, are taking right now because it's just the mobility is crazy. So slight nerf to it. I like that they keep it in because it's a good aspect of phantom assassin. The fact that she can just dive around the fight and whatever. Like that's her, that's her mobility. So slight nerf to the range. It's fair. PL base damage rescaled. He's got two minimum, ex two extra minimum base damage, and but two less maximum. So, uh, it's fairly. I guess it's a fairly wide variance. It's like 14 damage variance, and whereas it now it's 10. So making his damage a little bit more consistent. Um. I think the average is about the same. Doppelganger cast range reduced from 600 to 575. Phantom Rush range uh, reduced at level 4. Spirit Lance shard damage increased in damage and some uh, talent changes. Nothing too crazy. Shard has been reworked on Phoenix, one of my favorite heroes. Now causes Sunray to slow enemies by 12% and to be castable during Supernova. So that's back. Oh, that's the 20... That was on her 20 talent, her level 20 talent, and now it is in the Shard. And it's a slow, so... That's actually pretty nice, um, I would, I think for support phoenix the, the idea that you couldn't build this shard now that that sunray during egg is actually really good it makes it way harder for anyone to man up on the egg if you can also sunray them during it so the fact that you can buy it for 1400 gold is way better than having it on your level 20 talent i think because on supports it's just you're not going to get the level 20 for until it's like pretty late game so you can afford 1400 gold at 20 minutes on a phoenix um and so you can now have that shard at 20 minutes sunray max health damage reduced from 1.5 scaling to 6.75 to 1 scaling to 6.25 
So let yeah, less 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 damage on Sunray, but it still is max percentage health burn, which is really good. So still a really good spell. Uh, then uh, the radius of Supernova Nova d reduced from thirteen hundred to twelve hundred. So that's pretty big. It's a pretty big reduction actually in radius. It'll be, it means you have to be a bit closer to the fight probably with your Supernova, but now you get shard. So. Uh, level 20 talent reduced from 1100 Icarus Dash. Okay, yeah, slight nerf to the Icarus the Icarus Dive Cast Range talent, which is ri it's ridiculously far. So anyway, so it's still quite good. And now you get 0.5 Supernova Stun Duration talent at level 20 as well. Hey, Puck. Puck changes, everybody. We got Puck changes. Phase shift cooldown increased from six to a from a flat six to scaling 7.5 seconds down half a second each level to level six again at four at level four. So a bit more reason um, to level phase shift, I guess. Uh, I think basically you probably just took a value point in it before and then didn't level it again until. You had to, um, so yeah, bit of a nerf to phase shift, uh, and just just in cooldown, um, nothing too crazy. Winning rift cooldown increased from 16 scaling to 13 to 19 scaling to 13, so three seconds longer at level one, scaling to the same at level four. Cast range talent gone in in its Dead the a 0.75 waning rift silence duration cooldown at level 10. The illusory orb distance and speed talent has been replaced with a minus four second illusion illusory orb cooldown talent. So minus four seconds on orb, pretty good. Level 25, the waning rift AOE rate uh, has been slightly nerfed, which is still crazy, still very good. Pudge! I wonder if they decided to make Pudge a hero again. Base armor increased by one. Oh. Uh, attack range increased by 25. So he attacks even further now. Meat hook cooldown reduced 3 seconds at level 1 to 18. Dismember shard cast range on allies increased to 400. Which is actually a decent distance. So that's actually... More of a save than ever, because I think the shard the the shard is consuming them, which is a save. Rot scepter radius increased for 25, and then damage increased. So, yeah, I guess they're thinking that Pudge save is like a support might be a thing. I guess building the shard might be the way to be a useful pug, uh, Pudge support. Pugna, Pugna base damage increased 43 to from to 51 to 45 to 52 so just straight up buffing pugna's base damage okay nether blast delay reduced from 0.9 to 0.8 life drain shard interval reduced from 1.7 to 1.5 uh that's a lower interval meaning life drain will drain even faster that's a buff i believe level 25 talent increase from 1.5 nether ward damage per mana to 1.75 Pugna, still going to blow shit up. Queen of Pain, base attack damage changed from 45 to 53 to 46 to 52. So a bit closer, less variance. Average is the same. But lower maximum. But, so, oh well. Uh, blink, cooldown reduced. Level 1. Scales to the same. Distance reduced. Oh, the distance now scales too with Blink. So it's about 225 less distance at level 1 Blink. So that might uh, mean that you have to be a bit more careful to, if you want to steal every rune as a Queen of Pain and throw a Q on the other opponent who just, just is forced Nobody by plays nothing but tangos. A lot of people play Queen of Pain. And she's she's <laughs> I, I, like, she's... I think Queen of Pain is, is actually still pretty good. She's she's a she's a bitch. Some if if someone knows what they're doing with her, it's very hard to lane against this hero. 
Sonic Wave, Scepter bonus increased 390 to, to 420. Sorry. This is the second time 420 has been in these patch notes. No worries, man. No worries. Uh, Gaben is on the case. Yep. <laughs> scepter bonus. So even more damage on her alt with the scepter. She gets more bonus life steal from her talents. And uh, Sonic Wave damage talent lost, but minus two second blink cooldown. Crazy. Razor. Static link buff duration reduced to 15 seconds of level one. Slight nerf. Storm Ooh, okay. shard increased 120 to 150. What does the shard do again? The shard uh, on Razor. What? Where's the shard on Razor? There's causes Storm Surge to have a 18% chance when attacked and always when targeted with a spell to release a forked lightning that strikes the target and up to two other enemies. Steals 150 damage to souls and by 50% for one and a half seconds. So that damage is actually just increased. So the shard on Razor just got even better. Quite a bit better, actually. Um, slight increases to a talent as well. So Razor actually, like, getting buffed, which is surprising because he, he was getting played a bunch He's of the recent major. Yeah, that's, yeah that's... His, uh, his, win, his win rate right now is, I think, over 54%. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, EG was playing in, uh, like... Position one carry razor in the last major, so yeah, he's good, man. <clears throat> uh, crazy, bit of a crazy change. Okay, Ricky, I like Ricky. I hate Ricky. I love hate position with with Ricky. Now provides a plus blink strike. Now provides a plus fifty percent attack animation increase for the attack. I so, pff, I mean, there's there's a magic damage instance with blink strike, and then you attack. So I guess that just means that you're also going to get an attack off with Blink Strike. So this is like actually kind of a buff for Carry Ricky. Tricks of the Trade, attack damage reduced from 70, scaling to 100% to 50%. Now increases your agility by 50, scaling to 100%. So interesting, the attack damage. So that actually means, I think... Just that, that that scales with your items slightly l worse. Quite a bit worse, actually. I didn't uh, quite hear what you said with the change mode. Tricks of the oh, Trade, no. which Tricks of the Trade, which is his <clears throat> AoE thing. AoE bullshit, yeah. The, the attack damage is reduced from... Well, at level 4, it was 100% now to 50% at all levels. Okay, that, that's a massive nerf. It is yeah, a nerf. It is, it's a nerf to the item and damage from it. But it increases your agility by a hundred percent at level four, in it. So, yeah, but I mean, dude. Yeah. That that like the damage output is literally half. Like, fifty percent of your damage is going to not happen. Yeah. It increases. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. As a bonus from your. You'll still have bonus. You're still gonna have more agility. Like you're still gonna have a lot more damage. You're gonna have damage, and it. it may be less uh, that scales from your items. Is all I'm saying. Wait, wait. So it doesn't. So it only. It only. It's fifty percent of added damage from items. Of, only? of your of your attack. Of well, it's your attack damage. You know what I mean. So attack damage is the damage that's in. Uh, that's your base damage. It's not your base damage. That's your attack damage. Like that's include. So that's your items. That's stuff that you know, like adds attack. You know, you. Uh, that's worded weird. That I mean, makes it sound like all his damage. Oh, well, I would think it's yeah. I mean, I would think it, it's uh, attack damage. Right. Like that. Okay. I got you. I got you. So, which would suggest to me that that's what's also increased by increased by your stats. So, like, or, or items as well. So. Yeah, just it's it seems like the, the uh, probably a nerf I'd say just because a lot of like you're building like battle fury and then even like Daedalus and shit so like that's gonna reduce how effective that is you know you probably want to build more like butterfly and like stat items and stuff potentially or maybe not sleeping yeah, dart oh what? go ahead I'm not bad. I know I, I went into a flea unit and I got fucking fleas in my throat, dude. Jesus Christ, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Get rid of them fleas, fam. Sleeping dart. The shard on Ricky. Now the duration is increased. The sleep. Shard sleep no longer makes the target invulnerable to damage. They now wake up after taking 200. So, yeah. Great. I didn't realize that the sleeping dart made them fucking invulnerable. That seems like you wouldn't ever want to do that because... <laughs> At, uh, so now, yeah, more like a traditional sleep, and actually with a 200 damage th threshold, so... Probably, probably the reason why you literally never see Shard on Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might now. I, I think Sleeping Dart is actually, is a sort of a, it's a stun, actually. And it's it's a four second sleep. I didn't even sleep. know that that was a, a thing. It's a four second <laughs> sleep, too, now, so, like... Yeah. <laughs> That's it's not bad. Uh, changes to the talents... Nothing major. Plus eight strength instead of the regen. It's actually kind of big. The regen is nice on Ricky. Twenty damage to eight percent cloak and dagger movement speed while invisible. So, yeah, potentially they're trying to say I think like maybe Ricky being a support again could be a thing. But the like, blink range cast range replay. Ooh, so yeah, they even took it that the blink the blink range cast range talent is a big one too. Because that was what made him, like, super mobile, and 475 blink range, I think, is what you took, like, every time. And now it's minus four second blink strike replenish time. Ah, you know, it's still a buff to blink, it's still, like, a good thing for blink strike, and now it's on less cooldown, maybe you'll be, now you're just be, you're able to blink more often, just not as far, so. Interesting. Uh, Smokescreen AOE at level 25, to, that's cool. Rubik! Shard? Why? I gotta prepare myself. Gotta prepare myself. Uh, it's only four lines. So, the shard... They're, they're trying to make that shard a fucking thing, man. They are. The shard throw range is increased by 60% to, to 85%, and the cooldown is reduced on your lift from, from to 28, scaling down to 22 now. But that's the one that... It's the thing that allows you to telekinesis your teammates. So that's weird. And the level 10 talent changed from 150 health to 175 telekinesis landing damage. Okay, and then oh. the, and then the cast range talent at level 15 is removed in favor of 0.6 second telekinesis lift duration. So wow, bunch of stuff for telekinesis there though. Like the the shard is better for telekinesis now. And it can do damage. Well, what does the shark do for now? You can lift your teammates. No, I know. What what, what did the shard change do though? Like, what, what did they change it on, in this patch? The cool. It? Well, it they were it's more cooldown reduction on telekinesis, and then their throw range is oh, okay. increased by twenty five percent. So your throw range is increased wow, 85 okay. percent. Pretty wild, actually. Yeah. And then you All also right. and then you also have a. Uh, the telekinesis landing now damage talent at 10 and and duration at level 15. This is uh initiation rubik nah, I'm bad. Yeah, like he could lift axe and throw him in. <laughs> you know. I dig it. Yeah, or or well, lift or lift people and pull them out. Like that's like, I guess the idea. Yeah, yeah. I think it might be one of those things that's extremely good when used properly but just not many not when no one's doing it yet. So I, I, I never, I've never built a shard on him. I just didn't think. Nah. Well, that's the thing. I think, I think for sure it's in the game for a reason. They're thinking like, hey, the the ability to lift up your teammates could be used in all sorts of interesting ways. You could use it as initiation. Maybe yeah, use it as save. Like, um, save. I mean, Styrathol. Like, I mean, yeah. it's not bad, you know. But if it, it's just if it pierced like spell immunity, it would be really good. That'd be too much, man. Yeah. It's quite far, too. Like, it's pretty damn far. Anyway. Uh, Sand King. Um, Scepter cast range cre er, reduced. Scepter no longer triggers if there's near no enemies nearby. Shard radius increased. And some talent changes. That's okay. There was some bugs around his uh, the shard with his epicenter thing. Uh, that's cool. 
Very cool. Basically, Epicenter could... Be, it was always triggering, and it was like... It could actually reveal you if you were in vision, but like in the trees, for instance. <laughs> and people are just like, it's kind of annoying, like it's just going all the time. So now it's just going to start triggering whenever you're nearby other people. So cool. Or other or enemies, rather. Shadow Demon. Intelligence increased from 21 plus 3.3 .3 at each level to 22 plus 3.6. So more intelligence scaling on Shadow Demon. Jesus, this hero's getting, getting crazy. Talent changes. I know uh, somebody who will be very excited about Shadow Demon changes. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> your, yeah, your buddy there. He's like level 27 on him or whatever. Yeah, he has, he has like 1,400 games on that guy. Yeah. Level 10 talent change from 15 intelligence to 15% shadow poison damage. Level 10. So the cast range he has is an option for 10 strength. It's kind of boring, but all right. Uh, I guess if you want to go tanky or survivable, take the strength. Level 15 talent change from to plus 200 demonic purge damage. That's pretty good. Uh, or movement speed, which is up 25 points. Level 20 uh, cooldown reduction on Soul Catcher. Increased in level 25 talent. And instead of 400 demonic purge damage, which is now on his 15, is minus 30 demonic purge cooldown. So that's yikes, dude! Like having demonic purge, how often is that now? With the shard. Too often is the answer. Oh yeah, it's well, and actually, often. with the agonims, it is a, it's three charges too. Yep. <laughs> Getting scary, Shadow Demon. Getting scary. Um, Shadow Fiend, base attack time reduced by 1.7 to 1.6. Base armor increased by 1. Shard has been reworked. Now causes Presence of the Dark Lord to reduce magic resistance by 14%. Oh my god. <laughs> and Necromancy's, Necromancy's Soul Loss on Death reduced from 50% to 40%. Oh my god. <laughs> Short but, Ooh, <laughs> Short but sweet. Yeah, it's Shadow Shadow what Fiend is, Patch, baby. He's been is, he has been shit for a bit. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean the shard. I'll say this is like it's fourteen hundred gold, and all it does is make Dark Lord or your your presence or uh reduce the reduce their resist magic resistance by fourteen percent. Like that's that that's, that's almost double what it was before like it, it gave you it gave you 0.75 percent magic amp or uh, well, per soul you had it, that's what that's what the old shard did yeah 14 so percent magic resist reduction is actually more than yeah. than than that amp <laughs> for sure for sure it's it's a uh, it's it's a thing i mean it's potentially really good it seems a bit like out of place in this sort of thing where all these other Heroes are getting like new spells and stuff, though, that they haven't given Shadow Fiend anything new, really. Like he's getting these talents, which change his existing stuff, but like his his agonims increases the necromancy ma max souls and causes Requiem to return back to Shadow Fiend. That's that's a change, but I just I think that's like his shard should be something new. Like he needs like another spell or something, you know? It'd be nice. Anyway, I mean. Let's... Like, like, like an in an additional, a farther raise. range shadow raise. Yes. Nah, just kidding. That was or just a triple raise at the same time. Bam, bam, bam. You know, all of them. Anyway, uh, shadow shaman. Um, slight talent changes, nothing else. That's surprising. He's he's really high win rate right now in all brackets. Who? They actually buffed his level twenty five talent. Shadow shaman. Yeah. Dig it. Fuck that hero. They, yeah, just slight talent changes. Anyway, uh, silencer mana cost on last word reduced. It scales now. 100 from 100 to 115. Arcane curse damage reduced uh, at level four by six. No longer pauses damage when the debuff duration is delayed. 
no longer pauses damage. Debuff duration is delayed. Okay, Valve. I'm going to need a fucking diagram here. But, uh... Uh, that's interesting. Glaives of Wisdom shard damage behavior fixed was reducing non-glaives damage to the secondary target too much. Okay. Uh... Level 10 talent gets more armor. Tanky silencer, who knew? Skywrath Mage. Base damage increased by two rework shard upgrade. Every time you cast abilities, you gain five intelligence and one armor for 35 seconds, stacks independently. Fucking what? No. Dude. <laughs> You could just give yourself intelligence. Skywrath just gets a big brain by casting spells. Concussive shot cooldown reduced from 18 skill to 12 to 15. So that more concussive shots. Great. It's awesome. Fuck this hero. Anyway, arcane bolt damage multiplier reduced from 1.6 to 1.4. Base damage increased at level 4 to 135. Neat. Uh, level 10 talent change from 15... Movement speed to 175 health and level 25 damage reduced on Mystic Flare. Slardar. Sprint no longer unlocks maximum movement speed. Sprint River speed rescaled from 10 scale to 40 to 25% flat. Slytherin Crush. Shard now applies the debuff before the damage. Shard now also increases its radius by 20 by 75. Which I believe the what is the shard? Oh, it applies corrosive haze for five seconds, and uh, increases the range. Wow, that's the shard is shard even makes your your stun bigger. That's actually really nice. Bash of the Deep now does double damage against creeps. So carry Slardar. Officially back, 100% back with that. Double damage against creeps with Bash of the Deep? Are you fucking, fucking serious, dude? At level four, Bash of the Deep will do 400 extra damage every four, every three attacks. That's that's like old Drow level of broken, like. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> Slardar carry. Uh, level 10 talent. One more HP regen per second. Holy shit. And then more... 50 more health at level 15. <gasps> carry Slardar is back. Slark. Rework shard upgrade. Grants depth shroud. Creates a 300 AoE cloud at the target location for 3 seconds. All, all allies inside the radius are hidden and have increased regeneration and movement speed. All? What? That's fucking broken. It's not okay. Slark can give his ult basically to like his whole team now. <laughs> Tell me you can, like, hit them and see them if you're inside that cloud. Otherwise, let's just, like, support Slark is actually going to be a thing. <laughs> Holy they shit. Don't get, they don't get his health regen in that, right? They do. Oh, dude, what the... <laughs> All allies inside the radius are hidden and have increased regeneration and movement speed. <laughs> this is a cast range of 800, 75 mana cost on a 75 second cooldown. That's an alt in a shard. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. Like, why didn't they give, like, SF something cool like that? Anyway, Shadow Dance. Movement speed rescaled to being more earlier, less late. 24% uh, scaling to 48%. Level 10 talent increased to 8 agility. And more lifesteal on his level 15 talent. So, wow, Slark just fucking getting buffed. Great. Fuck that. Fuck that. Anyway, Snapfire. Bonus armor increased by 1. Intelligence increased by 18 to 21. 
So more mana. Little Shredder damage increased at level 4 to 95. Mana cost reduced across the board. 50 scaling to 80. Armor reduction duration re increased from 4 to 5. Scatter Blast Shard Stun Duration increased from 1.5 to 2. Oh, that's the shard which makes your shotgun stun them. So you have two stuns at that point. Uh, and the duration. Um, wow. The shard even. A lot of these shards are getting buffed, which is interesting. 20 minutes into the game is going to get interesting. Fire Snap Cookie. Jump distance reduced from 450 to 425. Slight nerf. Cooldown. I wonder if that means that you can't jump over hill. Probably, you probably still can jump up and down hills, I'd imagine. Cooldown reduced on cookie. Cool. More support, basically, oriented stuff here. Uh, making your tankier, have more mana, make things take less mana. Uh, and yeah. Sniper, take aim, active reworked, no longer gives double range for an attack, now lasts four seconds, and grants you true strike and 30% headshot chance, causes you to move 30% slower. 35 second cooldown, scaling to 20, mana cost 50. Ugh. Fucking A, man. They gave Sniper True Strike an extra headshot chance. Activatable. Crazy. Concussive Grenade now snucks, now knocks Sniper back 450 units away from the target's direction. <laughs> Dude, he's like Ziggs now. C cast range increased to 600. Level 25 talent buffed. Why, why buff Sniper? Remove him from the game. Uh, Spectre, base armor increased by one, Desolate damage increased early levels, Spectral Dagger cast range reduced from 1200 to 1800, Shadow Step, which is the shard, cooldown reduced to 30, Dispersion Shard now targets enemy heroes that damage you in eight last eight seconds, can ground target to find the closest valid target. That's a pretty good... That's a pretty good shard, actually. Mana cost cut into one third. Now sitting at 50. Spirit Breaker, cast time reduced on Nether Strike to one second. Bulldoze speed reduced at all levels. Uh, talent, more health. Storm Spirit. Electric Rave Shard upgrade is now an active on Overlord instead on Overload instead of a dedicated hotkey. Okay. Uh, travel Ball Lightning Travel Speed rescaled from 1250 scaling to 2500 to 1400 scaling to 2300. So faster at level one, slower at level three than it was. Overlord. Over overload bounce talent no longer applies to allies that have shard buff only storm spirit buffs from it now bounce talent now causes the second attacks to do 75% damage instead of 100% level 10 talent changed from 25 overload damage to 200 bunch of talent changes nothing too major here reworking some things Sven shard now reduces cooldown by 4 seconds scepter cast range reduced from 950 to 900 God strength damage increased from 100 to 200 percent at level three. 180 to 200 percent. Uh, talents. Talents reworked. Mana regen talent removed. 15 percent attack. Or now you get 15 attack speed. Warcraft duration. Nothing. Nothing too crazy here. Cooldown reduction. Talent chased Warcry armor. Interesting. Movement speed increased on techies by 10. They are continuing to buff tackies. Remote mine cast time improved by 0.25 now at 0.75. Minefield sign can no longer be placed in fountain areas so that's fucking that is uh, nerfing griefers. Blast off shard cast range reduced from by 300 
shard stun radius increased 200 and the shard stun duration increased by 0.25. They're just buffing everything to do with techies. Everything. Uh, blast off damage increased at level 15 talent and mana regen slightly nerfed. There's the only nerfed talent. It's, uh, one mana regen and not being able to put the minefield sign in the, in the fountain. Those are the nerfs. TA, Templar Assassin. Meld mana cost reduced. Now scales 35 to, 40, to 50 at level 4. Damage increased on meld to 80, scaling to 200. That's an increase of 30 damage at level 1. Cooldown increased from 12 scaling to 6 to 15 scaling to 6, so slightly longer cooldown at level 1. Sonic Trap Shard Silence Duration increased from half a second slash 3 minutes slash max to... What even is that? Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> that just looks strange in text. The Shard Silence Duration has increased from half a second to 3, three to... One and a half to three and a half maximum durations. Shard increased vision on the side traps to 525 radius. Pretty good actually. Cast range reduced to 1800, so slightly. Less cast range. Scepter mana cost reduced. Yeah. Changes. Ch -ch 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 changes to her talents that. A ah, little more side side blade range instead of movement speed at level ten. That's interesting. Everything else is pretty much the same. Slight buffs, slight buffs. It seems across the board for TA. Terrorblade, base HP regen increased from zero to one. Base damage increased by four. Base armor reduced by two. So, ooh, actually, that's a big one. That sucks. That sucks for TB. TB. You want to be tanky on TB. So, um, yeah, but I mean, the base increase is just good. I mean, they'll, uh, you'll be able to farm better and yeah, it just seems, seems from a stat perspective, he sort of has less ability to sustain, but he has regen to, I guess, to help with the regen part of it. He's just less armor, so... But he's he's an armor he's a tanky hero anyway he's got lots of armor uh, eventually so metamorphosis attack bonus damage reduced to 15 scaling to 60 attack range bonus reduced as well from a flat 400 to 340 scaling to 400 so yeah a little bit nerfing the early popping of metamorphosis in lane and getting kills with it that's little little bit here or there like I mean. Terrorblade could get a lot of free kills by doing that. <laughs> if someone's out of position and they don't realize he can just pop meta, meta, it's kills. So slight nerfs, but a bit basically the same. The attack damage bonus at level 4, 20 damage kind of hurts. But he still just dumps. At, like If he's in meta, he's still going to do lots of damage. Uh, reflection illusion damage increased. Okay. Slow rescaled. Duration rescaled five seconds at level one actually ref level one reflection might be a thing five second duration yes you usually have to have level three in reflection before you'd have that duration the slow slightly reduced in the early levels but so basically meaning like a value point and is even better now cooldown increased so yeah you'd, you'd take like a point in this just as a maybe defensive thing mana cost reduced as well so it scales Reflection looking like a little bit better item, or uh, a little bit better of a spell to take now. I mean, it's just slow is slightly less, but I mean the slow is actually better starting at level three to four. So yeah, interesting. Movement speed increased on level ten talent as well. That's actually pretty nice for farming. Five movement speed is always good. Tide Hunter. Gush, mana cost rescaled from 90 to 120 to 100 to 115. Very short changes for Tidehunter. They must... That's that's a bit strange. Yeah, it's because he got overlooked this patch. Timbersaw base armor increased by 1. Reactive armor 
rescaled uh, the duration it's lower at level four regen per stack reduced even more wow 0.7 to 1 3 so early game regen even worse on reactive armor now timber chain cast range reduced at level four by 150 travel speed increased so he's <laughs> Travel speed and on Timber Chain increased by 300 at level 1. I didn't even re realize that the travel speed increased, but I guess it does. Flamethrower Shard no longer ignores Ancients. Shard now affects buildings for 40% damage, which is the Flamethrower. Whirling Death, debuff duration rescaled. Scepter damage per second increased by 20 on Chakram. Wow. And slight nerf to the talent. We've got to be getting close here. Yeah, we're getting close to the end. Been going for three and a half hours. That's a that's a short patch. Defensive matrix shard status resistance increased from forty percent to fifty percent. Shard health increased from two hundred seventy-five to three hundred and fifty. Shard duration increased from twelve to fifteen. Laser. Uh, so shard, buff to the shard I don't think many people are buying it and defensive tinker or well support tinker might be a thing maybe they're trying to make it a thing scepter scepter current health reduction reduced by 5% on laser rearm cast point reduced from 0.53 to 0 wow Zero cast point on uh, on rearm. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's just an instant cast, basically. Quality of life, I guess. Twenty extra manager costs for rearm at level three, so ten at level two. So I mean, yeah, that's we'll add up. Channel time increased. That's probably the biggest nerf, right there. Half a second extra channel time on rearm at level one, and a half a second longer even at level three so yeah that's that channel time on rearm is pretty frequently happening so another half a second all the time on rearm is gonna hurt tinker for sure seems a bit extreme i feel like it should just scale from like three seconds to two seconds to one second but anyway heat seeking missile mana cost reduced uh and some Cast range re replaced the mana cost and mana loss reduction. Mana cost uh, plus one heat seeking missile level 15 instead. Interesting. Base HP regen on tiny increased half a set, half a point. <clears throat> Rework shard upgrade now causes tree grab to have a no charge limit. So you can just all you can just pick up a tree and hit people with it forever until you throw it. Tree grab mana That's cost. So good. It is. Tiny Tiny's back to being not not trash anymore, man. <laughs> yeah. He might even be broken. The mana cost on tree grab is reduced as well. Grow armor increased by two at each level. Tree volley cast range reduced. Tree volley tree throw cast range reduced by hundred each. Tossed cast range rescaled. To, to 900, scaling to 1200. Uh, 100 each level. Talents. Nothing major. Loses the damage talent in favor of its strength talent. The level 15 tree grab attack charges talent is removed and now in favor of 15% tree grab unit damage bonus. So at 15, he farms even faster. And then 15% status resistance at level 20. Interesting. Oh shit! Tree and Protector! Nature's Guys! Shard now grants invisibility near trees, so he won't have invisibility until 20 minutes. Leech Seed mana cost reduced by 30 at each level. Living armor cast time reduced by 0.1 seconds. 
talents. Loses his 60 damage talent to level 10 for mana regen. Loses the nature's guide invisibility level 10 talent for five minus five seconds nature's grasp cooldown. Fuck. So he gets mana regen or nature's grasp cooldown. That's that's an actual decision you can make <laughs> instead of just always taking nature's guys. Um. Uh, plus 24 nature's grasp damaged. Plus 30 cooldown reduction removed from the game. Uh, plus what eight living there? armor bonus Which damage. Okay. Deals at lows. Ah, talent, so talent this slightly moved around a bit. 400 level 25 talent. Uh, two 450 AOE living armor now works on creeps. Pretty good for defense. Troll warlord. Whirling axes. I've been playing a bunch of troll recently. Whirling axes range mana cost increased from 50 to 60. It's flat. Uh, whirling axes range distance reduced 50 to 950. Rework shard grants rampage globally causes all ad allied heroes to gain 70 attack speed. What? Or 25% status resistance for f 5 seconds based on whichever stance troll is currently in. Ranged provides attack speed and melee provides status resistance. Fucking A. That's kind of broken, actually. Jesus. Wow. Just everyone hits the tower, you know? That's a, that's a nice shard. Berserker's Rage, bonus armor reskilled. Um, movement, speed reske redu <clears throat> movement speed reduced on battle trance. That's probably a buff, actually. Talents slightly changed. Nothing much. Tusk. Wait, the troll the troll one is it increases everybody's attack speed on towers? Uh it gives you a new spell called Rampage. Globally causes all allied heroes to gain seventy attack speed or twenty five status resistance. Oh, so it's random. No, it causes all heroes globally. Yeah, you said seventy five attack speed or twenty five magic root. Yeah, but that's just based on both? which. It just both? no, it's based on whichever stance you're in. So if you're in ranged, you get the oh, attack okay. speed one. If you're in melee, you get the status resistance globally. That's pretty good. That's insane. <laughs> you know what? Uh, do you know what this means? Shadow uh, is that free free MMR is troll and lone druid spam. Yeah, that's what that is that is free MMR. Yeah, that yeah. is disgusting. Well, we're gonna. Say, I like this. I have no idea what is gonna become popular in this because I am looking forward to getting in there and sort of just walking around in the jungle a little bit. Because the whole map is different, <laughs> you know. No, I'm just saying, like, just just for freaking. Oh, I know. Just for like power siege, man, I'm and like. I'm excited to play some man. stuff. I'll be right back. One second. All right, we're back. We are back to reviewing Dota 3 here. Hold on. Yo, I, I told you that this patch was going to be new Dota, man. Like, this is big. This is I a know. big old, this I, is a I big know. old it's, shanker here. This has been, this is the, well... People have been waiting for this patch for a little while. This was, I think, this was like the other half of the patch that came out after TI. Honestly, this was, <laughs> this is, you know, a lot of changes were needed. I think, especially the map change. That's that's. I've been looking forward to that one for a long time. Makes the game feel new. How and, long has it been since the map change? Like I stopped. I stopped playing in 7.23, so I missed. It, uh, I missed every patch. 
<laughs> yeah, the map since the map has changed hasn't changed in like a long time. I think since seven point two two. Uh, I'm not even sure if it might even be before that. I don't know. I don't know, but it's yeah, it's been a welcome change. It's been in the same map I think now for like two years or something. Dang. Okay. Um, Tusk base HP regen reduced by 0.25. Walrus Punch now does the attack animation 40% faster. That's actually kind of nice because the wind-up animation for Walrus Punch is actually really fucking long. So, uh, tag team damage reduced. This was coming by five at every level. Snowball cast range reduced by 100. Cast range on ice shards. Reduced by 200. Mana cost increased by 15. Frozen Sigil, which is the shard now. Shard no longer reduces attack speed. Shard attacks to destroy increased to 6. Vision radius increased. 650. Movement speed increased by its 25. Mana cost reduced by 30. And shard slow increased by 5. So, yes, yeah, yeah, seems like slightly buffing the shard. Which is cool. I'm glad that they brought back Sigil. Sigil. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Underlord. Pretty strong hero right now. Attack range increased 25. Probably just kind of matches his animation a little bit more, honestly. Uh, Firestorm radius rescaled. Okay, so back down to a flat 425. So that's back to how it used to be, I believe. Shard no longer provides healing. Shard now increases the Firestone wave count by 3. Dark Rift Scepter now also increases the radius by 900. Scepter no longer reduces cooldown. Scepter now causes to have two charges of Dark Rift. Whoa, actually. That's cool. Two, shard, two, two charges on Dark Rift. The mind boggles at the possibilities. Uh... Level 10 talent for 125 storm firestorm radius, though. So you still have extra firestorm radius available. You just have to take talent for it. Uh, other than that, 40% atrophy allied bonus for a at level 25 as a talent. That's kind of cool. Undying. Undying is back. Agility gain increased from 0.8 to 0.1 to 0.2. Mana cost reduced from 85 scan to 115 to 85 scan to 100. Now it deals double damage to creeps. Decay. Wow. You can actually get last hits with decay now. Potentially. Uh, flesh golem. Illusions no longer apply the debuff. Huh. Decay. Slight changes to... Talents. Uh, cast range gone. Tombstone cooldown added. Uh, Ursa's shard... Uh, rework now causes Earthshock to apply a one and a half second enrage buff on yourself. Reduces cooldown by two seconds. Ah, that's worse. That's a nerf. Uh, the old shard would give you. Um, what is it? Uh, oh, it oh, it is enrage. But it's on Earthshock instead of it. The old shard would give you. Uh, Enrage after you would hit six fury swipes or with the uh, overpower. So that's, I mean, having having that actually be on Earthshock is probably a buff actually because that means that you get a one and a half second enrage every time you Earthshock. So you'll just, you just have Earthshock like enrage a lot uh, when you're fighting. So pretty good. Slight changes to his talents, nothing crazy. Uh, extra enraged status resistance, kind of good, potentially, at level 20. Vengeful Spirit damage increased to 44 to 50. So that's slight increase. Uh, her movement speed. What? Her base. Hey, I'm... Oh, oh, hold on. I'm streaming, fam. Uh, 
Uh, Vengeance Aura, Scepter Illusion, Movement Speed, reduced from 30 to 25. Radius increased by 25. On Wave Terror, Shard Damage Steel reduced by 5%. That Shard must be good. I think they're, ner they're nerfing it, actually. Shard now also steals 20% of the army's base armor. Wow. And some talent changes. What are you guys doing? I'm reading the patch, man. I'm streaming. Oh, yeah, I already went through it. Yeah, I've been streaming, reading patch notes for about three and a half hours now, so. Benomancer. Base damage increased. I don't like the new map. You don't like the new map? I feel like it's fucking great. It's more balanced. Sounds like CD didn't play back in 2013, 2015 era, man. I think I did. It, it does look a lot more like the old map. Uh, it is. It is the old map. <laughs> Carry on. Stop interrupting Shadow, please. <laughs> you sound weird. Poison. He's on his phone. Poison Sting. Slow. Reduced. By 1% at all levels. Yep. Fucking good spell, man. Poison Nova. Oh, they gave it radius. Fuck. 630. Way better. Duration increased as well. Talent changes. Whoa. 12% spell life steal of 15. That's actually pretty nice. Get that way earlier. Ah. Wait, ah, they just put the hero updates right now. They just changed it right now. I've been streaming reading these patch notes for about three and a half hours, bro. <laughs> uh, poison attack, mana, mana cost, rescale. Yeah, yeah, but I'm telling you because I played earlier and there were still no... Oh, they, they didn't drop the patch like right away. I think it, it delayed it like no, about no. an hour or something. The hero updates is the newest. Oh. Yeah, the the patch came out at like I like three thirty, I think, is what it was, or it's around that afternoon. Uh, yeah, I mean I've I've been live now for like three hours and fifty minutes. So. Have I been in here? Have I been in here this yes. whole time? Yes. Yes. Or a bunch Thank of it, yeah. Thank you for the uh, insight while I work, dude. <laughs> no worries. Fucking, I couldn't wait because I would end up just, I would end up just stop fucking working and just read yeah. these patch notes, and I couldn't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, you were watching like Purge stream he did today. I watch a little bit. He gives idea on how to. Yeah, I. Oh fuck! I failed to. I have watched his his stuff. I just I just like stream it myself. Viper. Oh, you're streaming, right? Yes, um, I've, I've been streaming. Yes, I've been streaming for three and a half, like almost four hours. Shard armor. Three? Huh? Shitty right now, finish. He's almost through it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I don't know if I've. I'll send you this real quick. It's all right. I was like trying to fucking do a bunch of things. Martian, I love you. Remember that. Here you go. Uh, and he's listening. He's, he's actually listening to the patches. Patch stuff. Poison attack on Viper. Fuck this fucking hero. But like mana cost reduced. Now scales twenty twenty six. Shard armor reduction reduced by to one. Shard now also causes it to affect poison attack to affect buildings for forty percent poison damage. So you get that with the shard again. That's pretty scary. That was a level 25 talent before, and that's just on the shard. Uh, Viper Strike, mana cost reduced by 25 at all levels. Uh, you now get 25 talent for double corrosive skin, slow, and resistance. Gross. Gross! Fuck Viper, take him out of the game. I'm almost done with these passions. Uh, visage, attack animation improved. By point zero six. For all of us Jesus. Here at News Center Four, I'm Ron Burgundy. Hey. You stay classy, San Diego. Hey, what's up? Half CD. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, bro. 
It's almost like... I put announcements in his Discord like all the time. I'm surprised you haven't seen those. You're in the, you're in the live thing. Uh, dude, Visage. Martian, do you play Visage? Or do you hate Visage? I think you hate Visage, right? What are you talking about, man? I thought you hated Visage. Right? No, I have a lot of I have a, a lot of games on Visage, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I've been I've been trying I've been meaning to take him mid recently actually because he's at he's disgusting but I just haven't gone around to it. Yeah. I mean these are buffs, yeah, man. Uh, these are buffs like the attack animations like do. whatever but base armor's plus one, mana cost on soul assumption is no longer scales it now is just a flat 125 which is cheaper than it ever was. Gravekeeper's cloak shard mana cost. Uh, reduced and the heal increased. I forget what the the shard is on Gravekeeper's cloak. Hold on. It uh it gives him stone form. He, he he's able to turn into a bird and it heals him. Oh or yeah. Into a, yeah, like kind of how like his, his actual birds drop, you know. Sink. Yeah. Yeah. So that's even that that's even better now. Cheaper on mana, more heal. Void Spirit, uh, Dissimilate Shard Damage Increased to 200, Aether Remnant Cast Range Reduced by 150. Oh, that's actually kind of a good nerf to Aether, Aether Remnant, which, like, you can cast it so fucking far, man, like, holy fuck. So, that's a slight nerf to that, like, it's probably still good with the Yules combo. Uh, anyway, Astral Step, this is a big one for him, Cast Range Reduced. At level three by a hundred, level two by fifty, so That'd be not a huge deal, but cast range is always good, and so losing it sucks. Replenish time improved. Oh, but they buffed the replenish time on your charges of astral step by two seconds at every level, so pretty good. That's, I think that's a good trade-off, honestly. The the range for cooldown yeah, reduction. That, uh, yeah, that might actually. I might actually play him now. Cause that was my biggest that was my biggest complaint is like he just he didn't have a, he wasn't slippery enough for me to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. he, he wasn't how I he Yeah. I, I I couldn't play him how I wanted to play him. But now I think uh I think like he like, could, you gotta think of Void Spirit like similar to like Puck in a way. He he benefits from a lot of the yeah. same items. Like you could build Yules and Blink on Void Spirit, you know. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. You know, you're not wrong. I've actually never tried playing or building Blink. Yeah. Um, Yules, I I go Yules every time on them, but. Well, I think um, just the the fact that eventually you could upgrade Blink now into like Arcane Blink, like if yeah, you really yeah. need that mobility, like you could definitely do that, and then you have your Yules dispel into Blink out combo as well with like Dissimilate. Like he's a very slippery hero, man. I, anyway. Uh, resonant pulse, uh, mana cost increase, cooldown uh, increase. So they gave you, and then the talent one second lasts at level 20 on astral step charge time. But that's just you're just getting that with leveling the spell now. So I feel like he's got, uh, yeah, just cooldown, mostly just cooldown changes with his stuff and slight cast range reduction. Which I think is probably fair. Void Void can change can chase like a motherfucker. Warlock Shadow Ward Shard Movement Speed Slow Reduced from ten to from twenty to ten. I don't I didn't know anyone was buying that shard, but okay. Uh, ten percent. I guess I thought it was good, but I guess now it's only ten percent movement speed, and I think it's also. Wait, who? Warlock. Oh, okay, 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 okay. The shard on him makes Shadow Word an AoE f spell that gives 10% movement speed and slows enemies by 10%. Still kind of good. Makes Making it AoE. Yeah, and then they reiterate that. So shard now changes it to a 400 AoE. Oh, so shard on Warlock just got eat way better, actually. Because shard now, now it changes it to a 400 AoE spell. 450 OA spell. Which was previously your level 20 talent. So Shard might be 
fucking really good on Warlock now. A lot of these shards are getting fucking buffed, man. Holy shit. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like they are, you know, they want people to get shard almost here, which makes sense, you know, obviously. They would yeah, I, I think, like, level 20, like, or, or, or minute 20 is going to be, like, an important uh, mark for that reason, because just a lot of these shards coming online can cha can really start changing stuff. Yeah, a lot of them are game changing, man. Literally. Yeah. So. Dude, they're changing upheaval. This is a spell that I feel is like overlooked a lot. Cast time improved by 0.4 seconds. AOE reduced from a flat 650. So they gave it the old Alk acid spray treatment. So now it scales from 500 to 650. Slow cap rescaled from 84% to 40, scaling to 100%. So actually, level four even better. Jesus. Slow per second rescaled from 7 to 28 to 12 to 27. Max duration reduced from 16 to 10, scaling to 16. All right. Scepter spawn interval reduced from 0.4 to 0.2. Uh, oh, I got music back here. Oh, no, this can't be it. There we go. Uh, let's see. So wow, I mean, upheaval changes. I think that they're trying to give it more of a reason, I guess, to to take it. But that's weird. Why they would? I guess the slow per second is much higher at earlier levels now. So maybe that ends up being a better slow early on. But uh, yeah. Talent changes, cast range reduced, just like everything else. 50 chaotic offering. Golem movement speed. Dang. I should have been doing this the whole time, but what are the talents? Can I look at talents? Oh, guess not. All right. I really like Warlock. He's like one of my favorite supports. But the uh, Shadow Word cooldown changed slightly. Eight armor removed. Upheaval DPS. That does da- Oh, at level 15, this does damage now. That's actually... What? That's actually good. I still think you probably take Shadow Word cooldown because that's just one of your main spells. And having it on a lower cooldown is just a bit hard to give up, but 40 DPS for this spell might be actually worth it. No, you could, um, there's a lot of cool ways you could use that actually totally. for like a, a farther range of a blink cancel, for instance. Well, yeah, um, it, I guess that's a, actually, I didn't even think about that. It can cancel blink now. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Pretty big. And so it's, it's, let's just do the math here. 16 seconds times uh, 40 DPS is actually 640 damage. So whatever's in there, that's creep wave. You can clear creep, creep waves with that. Uh, chaotic offering, scepter spawn interval reduced from 0.4 to 0.2. So faster stuns with the scepter. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't think, like, yeah, the level 20 talent is kind of good too. Yeah, this interesting choice to make at level 15 though, really, honestly. I think I like this. 8 armor is just, I guess, you know, survivability spell, but who, you don't really want to take 8 armor, you know, on, uh, Warlock. <laughs> anyway. Weaver, Sukuchi no longer unlocks maximum uh, movement speed. Now moves at haste speed always. Solid change. I yeah, think. probably. Like, I think uh, just it's a nerve. It's but, a nerve. Uh, I but think it's needed. Haste is also still good enough. I mean, like. The only, like, they've, I don't know why they've really been experimenting with this, like, unlocking movement speed 
cap thing because it it just inherently means that like some hero might be able to just like outrun everyone else in the game which maybe that's good but it seems a bit also broken weaver's been really strong so i think that's actually like better early too for sakuchi might be good old sakuchi back talent changes Ooh, two Sakuchi charges at level 25. That's actually interesting. 35 attack damage at level 20. Cool changes. Uh, mana cost. Wind Ranger. Mana cost changes. Cool. Shard now reduces cooldown by 1.5 seconds on power shot. Pretty strong. Kill threshold no longer scales based on power shot channel. Fucking what? Wait, what? Did the shard <laughs> before give, give Wind Ranger an, ex an execute? I was. Like oh, Power Shot now becomes global but only hits heroes beyond its default range. E impacted heroes will be killed if they are under 13% after taking the impact damage. It's an execute. I totally forgot about the shard on Wind Ranger. That's it's global. <laughs> That's broken. So it's just a flat thing now. It used to scale based on the channel. Crazy. Sep That's Ash alt. Anyway, <laughs> Wind run is in the air, which means we have tons of deals. Scepter no longer unlocks max movement speed. Still provides two charges. Scepter now passively provides thirty percent evasion. Holy shit. Scepter now provides haste instead of increasing the speed from sixty to hundred. Fucking hell, man. That that shard uh very worth now. Just all like 30% evasion is just out of nowhere for getting a sh wow and you get the charges like that's pretty sounds strong witcher wyvern base armor increased by one arctic burn cooldown reduced from 42 to 20 throw out a foam 42 scaling to 20 winter's curse now ends if there's no enemies in the area for two and a half seconds that's a nerf. That's a nerf to just solo kill Winter Wyvern. That is a bit of a nerf. Um, cooldown reduced from 80 to from 90 to 80 on the alt. Duration increased to 4.5 to 5.5. Curse radius increased to 525. Attack speed increased to 65. Cold embrace shard no longer increases sprinter brace damage by 80. Shard now also reduces cooldown by 5 seconds. Level 10 talent increases 1%. Uh, talent changes. So this is interesting. Winter's Curse. This seems like just generally... It's kind of a buff to Winter's Curse early game. But like soloing someone with Winter's Curse, you'll lose two seconds off duration. Three seconds later, but increase the radius of two, so just sort of balance. Nothing too crazy from Winter Wyvern. Paralyzing Cask, Witch Doctor, hero damage increased from 50 to 50, 60, 70, 80. I was say, so it actually scales, does some damage now. Paralyzing Cask, back. This five armor talent and no health, which is probably a buff uh, overall, just as you're probably dying from magic damage and just general damage. And I think having flat health is probably better more consistently as a support. Level 15, uh, Malice Day we talent buffed, and yeah, talent changes. Wraith King, just talent changes. Ooh, uh, that Wraith Fire Blast cooldown is now Stun Blast duration. 
movement speed talent at level 15. I don't, and they're losing 12 strength talent, but that goes to level 20. So they're switching these around. Movement speed earlier is better though, I would think, for for uh, carry. Just it's just pretty dang strong. I forget what the other. What is the? Oh, I keep forgetting that I can't look at talents. Isn't it strange that we can't look at talents on this? Weird. Zeus, our last hero, base armor increased by one. Shard cooldown reduced by three seconds. Static fields. Talent changes. 50% lifesteal at 25. That's pretty wild. 20 movement speed level 10. Wow. All right. We did it. We fucking did it. Read the whole damn patch. All of it. One go. Fuck you, Purge. Um, Dawnbreaker. We, uh... I think we're gonna end it on Dawnbreaker. This, uh... Hey, thinking, thinking huh? Dawnbreaker, I think Dawnbreaker would, uh, might actually be a way better off lane. She could be off lane for sure. She, like, is weird, is that... Initiation, AoE team heal, you know, like, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's that's everything that a offlaner would want, right? And tank. Her like. her heal though is is like off of her attacks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like she needs to like hit someone a bunch. Yeah. To do the healing. What's the problem with that? There's no problem with that, it just means that she has to be hitting people. You know what I'm saying? Like... Typically, like... Oh, so this is weird. This is... It feels like there should be something that tracks this. Oh, I see. Every four... It's like every... After three attacks. So every four hits... Test. What? Okay, so the heal is m pretty minor. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little... It's a little... Immortal Faith already has hey. a Dawnbringer guide. How? A little bit... A li I mean, dude, come on. A mortal player. He's an immortal player. <laughs> yeah. I mean, theory crafting is what those high-level players do, you know what I'm saying? I have faith in the immortal. I feel like he didn't build Battle Fury, though, and I feel like that's a mistake. Well, what's the, is it safe lane? I think you I'm could a, take I, him I safe. I think you could honestly take her safe lane. No, no, you can. I, I just don't. I think that there's better heroes in for that lane, and that she. I really do think that she's gonna be a really. I think she belongs in the off lane role, either off lane or mid, to be honest. That's just my Maybe. two cents, though. Might be right. Just I'm, I'm sure she'll fit somewhere eventually. So it, the hammer, man, celestial hammer is. Is a crazy item. Or a crazy spell here. Like. <laughs> she 
she's a zero man. She's a wee, she's a wee bit strong. Can't wait. I can't actually wait to see what's possible. Let's see if there's anyone playing Dawnbreaker right now. Oh yeah. Someone is pro playing. Well, some 80, this is, I'm watching an 84 rank immortal player play this Dawnbring, Dawnbringer hero. They're losing. How? This guy went Power Treads, Orb Corrosion, Blink, Solar Crest, Hood. The Dragon Knight set, though. Quinn. Store right now. I will be home shortly. Cool. Ugh. Well, I'm probably gonna probably gonna kill the stream here anyway. Uh, thanks for popping in. I, I would have been watching it, man. I'm sorry. Hey, no worries. No worries, man. Not at all. I I just I I'm gonna probably edit this stuff later and maybe put a YouTube thing on. So. Cool. Don't have to worry about no, it. No, but dude, I, I, I was trying to watch your stream because I saw you post your thing or whatever. Yeah. And w whenever I, like, you know, sleep my phone or turn the screen off, the, the audio stops.